Good afternoon, curling fans, and welcome to Championship Sunday. We are broadcasting live from the St. John's Curling Club. It is the Remax Center, and we are here for the 2023 Newfoundland Tankard. It is the Provincial Men's Curling Championships. Today we have on sheet three, Team Greg Smith versus Team Nathan Young. We're expecting a great game here today in the broadcast booth. It's Steve Sporty Bragg, and alongside of me is Mr. Jamie Koreb. Jamie, what are you expecting to see today? Sporty, we're in for a real treat here today. Had a chance to talk to Greg Smith before the game and ask him what his key was to today and what you know what's he hoping to do. And his only response was not to play 31 ends of curling the day before. But uh, no, we're in for a great game. We got Nathan Young, who finished first in round robin at six and one. And we got Team Smith that were four and three, had to play a tiebreaker than a semi. Sporty, right off the bat, we've got a center guard, and I could not be happier. Yeah, Jamie uh, was at the Arts and Culture Center last night for the Elton John uh, Billy Joel tribute, and uh, Saturday night's all right for fighting, and Greg was fighting last night to get in this final. 31 ends, as you mentioned. They both took different roads here. Nathan went 6-1 and one in the round robin, go, well, going straight to the final. Greg, however, had to play uh, his last game of the round robin yesterday morning. He drew the pin to beat Andrew Simmons, had to come back out on the ice in the afternoon, Played the tiebreaker, went to an extra end and won that game. And then, of course, he uh, beat uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood in the semifinal last night. So, two different roads to get here, but it's all about just this one game now. Yeah, it's nice to see some rocks in play. What we've seen sporty throughout this provincial is being a 10 end game. A lot of teams tend to throw the first one in the house and kind of go up and down the sheet, being an exchange hits. But with this center, um, on Young's first rock there, the lead. They just went a little deep, so now we're getting a free. So it's great to see some rocks in play. How do you think, uh, Jamie, uh, Zach Young is feeling? Uh, when you look at the players on this ice, Zach is the only guy who hasn't been a at a briar. Uh, I know he's extremely excited and talking to him earlier. He'd really like to win this game. What do you think is going through his head? I'm sure he's excited. Uh, probably had a little trouble sleeping last night. You know, I think for Zach to keep his nerves in check, Zach's a pretty high intense player. At the best, at the best of times in the club game. So, just keeping that in check. You know, the other eight, guys, seven guys, as you mentioned, have been to a briar, so they've been in this final. Um, you know, so I, I remember oh three, our first, my first provincial final. You're you're hamped up, but uh, it's going to be going to be a challenging game. Like I said, keep those emotions in check, and uh, you know, so far they're off to a good start. Absolutely. So uh, we are in the first end here. Uh, ben Stringer just made a hit on a Greg Smith rock. So uh, Team Nathan Young lie to. There is the center. Both rocks are behind the T line. Greg has asked his second Adam Bolin to uh, remove that stone, maybe roll over to the center if he could. And I think we mentioned in Sporty, uh, Team Young started with Hammer here, being that they finished first in round robin by to the final. So that's certainly an advantage of uh, going 6-1. and one. Jamie, they're really working this uh, rock hard to get a piece of it, and he does catch a piece, but just slides by the yellow in the back eight foot, so I think we're going to see Nathan Young come around that center and probably try to put one in the top four to lie to. And Sporty, a few people ask me, who do, actually my wife asked me, who do I think is going to win this game, and you know, I honestly said it's a coin flip. I think what it's going to come down to is, you know, one of my old curling coaches, Nipper, used to say, it's not what you make, it's what you leave. So, in his example here, by that hit and roll out, gives Team Young a chance to come around that guard, whereas if they would have stuck, they probably would have had to hit it. So, uh, it's going to be a game, you know, whoever, I want to say whoever misses the least, but uh, whoever gets the rocks in the best positions forces the other team. We got two great teams here. I mean, this is a rematch of uh, the final last year, Jamie. Uh, both these teams played in the final. Greg Smith, you know, hats off to him. If by my count, this is his fourth tankered final in the last six years. Uh, Nathan Young and the guys uh, obviously are looking for a repeat on this championship. Uh, it seems like they've won everything the last two years. Uh, so they are at the top of their game. So I expect a great game here this afternoon. Big run back here. Does get the double. Craig's got to work on it. Great attempt there. Just over curled a bit sporty, but... Uh, you know, in the first end, you know, any player, you want to make your first drop. You want to make your first few shots of the game. So that's a great shot there. Make that run back. Almost a double, but, you know, you opened it up. It was a great shot. Just missed making the double. And now we're going to see uh, the second uh, Nate Locke here uh, try to execute a draw behind that uh, uh, center guard that uh, up there in the, on the center line there to lie to. So... Uh, they seem pretty happy about the waist. They're just kind of dusting it, Jamie. I think the line is pretty good. 
main thing is here you want to keep it above t-line as it comes in you also there you can see they're trying to make a curl there by sweeping it in you see the brooms go in the air real nice shot by uh, young nathan lock there and uh, now we're going to see a guy who can throw the heat chris ford he's the third for greg smith he is going to try to run back and see if he can make that run back double that uh, his second adam boland almost made so they're going out of his hand here Looks pretty good, Jamie. That's he's got the run back. Does he get it out? And wow. it's a great shot there. What an what a great curling shot, Jamie. I, I called the tiebreaker game yesterday against Simmons, and Chris Ford was making a lot of rocks, and he comes out of the blocks here and makes an absolute pistol, makes the run back double, and also the rock that he ran back is behind the center guard, pretty much fully buried or uh, three quarters buried for sure. So great rock from uh, Chris Ford. You see now Nathan Young. Looks like he's playing about a hack-ish weight here, trying to tap that back. One thing sporty, the ice here, up for the last few years, but certainly for this tanker, has been great ice, quick, lots of curl, and the main thing, it's been consistent. It has been great ice, and uh, probably a good time to give a shout-out to uh, our club manager, Harold Walters, and I know uh, Evan Kearley as well does a lot of work on the ice. Uh, just They've done a great job all week to have the ideal conditions here for these great curlers to be able to execute some great shots. So although we didn't get that out, uh, you can see now Greg, this is kind of what I alluded to uh, about five minutes ago, Greg now has to hit this rock and you know there will be no rock left behind that guard so it will give Nathan Young a chance that if he wanted he could come around again so uh, that's a good shot there. Yeah we're getting deep in the end here uh, uh, Jamie and there's an opportunity for Greg Smith and team to lie to and maybe try to get the force in this first end but the key here is Chris Ford has to stick around and they're working it pretty hard to get the uh, rock to try and stay and it is going to roll out Jamie so I think you're going to see Nathan Young uh, go over and hit that Greg Smith rock and uh, he's probably thinking about the blank right now if he can find a way to do that. Yeah, if you would have seen that nose hit there from Ford you might have seen Nathan Young come around because the chance of getting a blank when you've got two rocks in the 12 foot opposite ends but now he's going to hit no, he is definitely, yep, he's hitting, but uh, confuse me for a second, Sporty. I like the weight that uh, Team Young are throwing there. If you notice, the Smith team probably threw a normal takeout weight, and if you don't hit the rock perfectly, you can roll out. So this is a nice control weight. Yeah, he definitely, they didn't overthrow this, uh, Jamie. Just like you said, a light control, almost like a board weight. Uh, easier to control the rock then, and a real nice shot by uh, Sam Follett to uh, hit and stick and Greg is going to make his way up to the hack and uh, he'll try and make the same shot. Yeah, that lightweight takeout, you really bring your sweepers into play with the directional sweeping now, even though the material in the uh, broom heads have changed, you still can keep a rock straight, you can make a rock curl, so you know, throwing that lightweight, you do give it the chance of sweepers and give you a better chance to make that shot. So if you are watching the broadcast, Greg Smith may, may be a familiar face to you. Uh, he. Uh, Obviously, he's been at two briars, but uh, if you're traveling at all, he works up at the Yellow Belly in the airport. Last time I was catching a flight, uh, saw Greg up there and had a chat with him. So. And you never uh, had a beer. I, you probably didn't have a beer. I might have had a pint or two of Rickards Red. Could have happened. Anyway, Greg has delivered the stone, and uh, they're working it to try and make it curl so that he can stick around. And he is going to stick around. Nice shot by Greg Smith. And Nathan Young will come back for his first rock of the end. And... Uh, they're going to take uh, it's interesting jamie it's all about preference but uh greg has thrown the uh, outside intern and and uh, uh sam and and nathan have opted to take the other turn yeah these teams here i mean they they practice a lot you know i know nathan young's team is down here a lot the team smith's down here a lot and this is things they work on in the game you know they know for the most part just about every situation they know what turn they're going to throw the weight so you know this is just comes down to comfort and what you practice yeah, they did, uh, Nathan and Sam and team, uh, they, they ran the table in the Super League this year, went 11-0, and obviously defending uh, champions here in this tankard. Uh, and the reason they're there is because they do practice a lot. They're on the ice all the time, Jamie, and uh, always working at their craft. So he's going to want to hang around here, or he's going to give Smith a chance to come around and put some pressure on, and unfortunately, Sporty just overcurled the hair. Yeah, that is unfortunate because now Greg Smith has the opportunity to come behind that center guard and uh, 
if he can bury this, Jamie, the force is on, really. Uh, if he buries this real nice, uh, you'll see one or two shots. Nathan will either have to try and draw the button to get his one. He may run it back and try and get the blank. But uh, he's going to put some pressure on Nathan Young on his last rock. Yeah, and a lot of the national coverage of Sporty, you'll see the uh, commentators talk about the keys of the game, which, to be honest, are made up. Uh, here, the key to the game, honestly, is you want to make sure you stick around, not give, like I said, Team Smith here a chance to give that easy free come around. And also, you're giving Greg Smith a chance to throw a draw. If Nathan would have made that hit, then Greg would be throwing another hit. So you don't want to give Skips free draws because, you know, if you cannot have him to throw a draw until the seventh, eighth, ninth end, then he's got to remember what he did yesterday. Absolutely. Jamie, I would have thought there's only one key to the game, and that's to score more points than the other team. That's a result of making more shots. That's an outcome sporty. I'm talking about the process. <laughs> so a real nice draw there by Greg Smith. He puts it pretty much on the lid. Uh, so Nathan, I think, is looking at Jamie playing like a heavy draw, coming down and just tapping that. He's willing to uh, take his one at this particular point in time. Yeah, that's a pistol there by, uh, by Smith. I mean, if he was a rock higher, it would have been perfect. But, you know, the way in the first end, if you can, you're like, your goal is to force the other team, that was what they've done here. So, uh, you know, successful end for Team Smith, regardless of what happens on this shot. Jamie, with that ice, is he playing a, almost a hack waiter? Does he think he can remove that and roll out the shooter? Is, is that at all possible? No, that's the exact the same ice that uh, followed through on his first. So uh, they know this ice. They're going to throw it hack weight. And uh, they're just trying to score their one here. Reed Carruthers is famous for making the shot with a firmish board and doing that hit and roll out. But looked like they were calling it to uh, to take one. Now he did take a hair more ice than Sam. So we're broadcasting live from the Remax Center, the St. John's Curling Club. This is the final of the 2023 Men's Newfoundland Tankers, and this is the final rock of the first in from Skip Nathan Young. They're, go they're uh, just going a little little heavy here. He's not heavy. I'm trying to make a curl now, Sporty. Just got to move it a rock. Looks pretty good, Jamie. And you see Greg put his hand in the air, and uh, Nathan's team does as well. So a nice shot to start the game there for Nathan Young. And uh, after one end of play in this final of the 2023 men's Newfoundland and Labrador tankers, it's Team Nathan Young 1, Team uh, Greg Smith 0. We'll take a minute and be back to broadcast the second end. Live. Welcome back. Uh, we're here for the 2023 Newfoundland Labrador Tankard Final. It's the second end. Team Nathan Young just scored one in the first end. And now we're into the second end, the first rock of the second end from Ben Stringer, who is uh, the Nathan Young lead. He's put it in the top eight. And now we're going to see some action, Jamie, as Greg has called for the corner guard. And I, and I wanted to mention one thing. It is Championship Sunday, Jamie, I said. And uh, on ice four there, I think... Is there an update in the ladies uh, final? Because we also have the 2023 Scotties going on and the final on the sheet next to this ice. Their first end is over, Sporty, but you came in a little too early on me because I have no idea what happened because I was concentrating on my sheet. Well, we've just been informed uh, there was a steal of three uh, in the first end. The score's up there, yeah. So it was unfortunate miss there by uh, Team Strong. So Team Curtis leads 3-0 after one end of play in the ladies' final. And that game is live streamed as well. We have uh, curling legend, as you call her, the goat of ladies curling here in Newfoundland, Kathy Cunningham and uh, Rob the Curly Room Thomas are over uh, commentating the ladies' game. And if you're looking for that stream, you can get it on the NLCA social media. I do call her the GOAT, uh, 18 provincial championships, I think. You and I and her, her did the uh, tanker final last year, and uh, you know you've got a lot of championships when you got to think about how many you have. 
and uh, she definitely has 18. Jamie, uh, I have three, and I'm just moving into seniors now. I figure if I rattle off four or five seniors in a row, maybe throw in a club or two there, I might get to that 10 number or 12 before I get to Masters. Then if I can run the table until I'm 65, I think I can get to the 18. What do you think? Well, I think you need to set obtainable goals, Sporty, and uh, that's not obtainable. <laughs> Realistic goals. Yeah. Anyhow, back to the action, uh, and we're getting the second rock of the second end from the lead of Greg Smith, uh, Zach Young. He was trying to make the double takeout. He gets the top rock there uh, and rolls out. So I think we're going to see Nathan Young come up with the uh, guard, Jamie. Yeah, and the rock right before that just slipped into the house. If it would have stayed short, um, Zach wouldn't have had that hit. So with that rock just sliding in, it gives him that option. So I think you'll see... Uh, Nathan, just try to come a little shorter on this one and stay outside the house. So, yes, Nate is going to try and throw about a three guard. We call it in the three zones there uh, on his first rock of the end. Uh, I understand Nate is a country music fan. You got any country music on your uh, playlist, Jamie? I own a truck, and uh, I partake in some liquid, and uh, apparently my family says we're getting a dog, so I, I hit the trifecta. You hit the trifecta, but, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big country music fan. Very good. So uh, back to the action here. Adam Boland with his first rock. I think uh, they've called the peel. Um, maybe he might try the run back, Jamie, but I, I think he'd be happy with the peel. I think they're playing the run back. He was a little tight and set it, but I think he might uh, no, just rolled away. They were playing the run back. You know, it worked out. They ended up with uh, they got two corner guards there now. So, you know, Nathan's got to be careful here, make sure he gets this guard in a good position. That did work out extremely well. I mean, those two guards are, you know, side by side almost. Uh, there's no double peel. And if the guard is not uh, executed properly here by Nathan Locke, then uh, Greg Smith may be able to bring those corner guards into play. And as you know, Jamie, when you have the hammer, you like to try to get the play to the wings on the side of the sheet. So this is, a, this is very important in terms of rock placement to get this rock guarding that rock in the top eight foot just biting the four foot. One of the things, too, I'd like to see Sporty is a lot of teams throw corner guards and never use them. So if you're going to throw them, use it. So, uh, you know, it all depends now on these rock placement. Greg's been going to force to play a run back again, but if he doesn't get that guard in a perfect place, that'll give Greg that opportunity to hit and roll and bring the wing up to the sides like you mentioned. Absolutely. Now, I think that guard, he's looking at the run back, but that ended up pretty high, Jamie. I don't know if they could make a play with, like, a, a board weight and get by that guard and, and access the rock in the house. Uh, and I think that is what they've called, and it would be a real nice shot if they could, like you say, take that rock and roll over behind the uh, the corner guard. And they should know the ice. This is the, uh, you know, it's going the other way, but both Sam and Nathan played a, a shot here. It looks like F uh, Ford might have a, sorry, Ford might, uh, Bolin might have a little bit more weight. I think he's closer to hack, so I think they're going to have to make this curl sporty to make contact. They're really working this hard, Jamie. Oh, and he just grazes it, unfortunately. He did push it maybe out the other side a little bit, but I think you're going to see Nathan Young come in there and put one right on top of that. Yeah, with that high guard now, if Nathan can get one uh, on the center line, top top eight, you know, you never want to play for a miss, but if you're a hair light here and leave it guarded just outside the house, uh, it's going to put Team Young in a good position here this, uh, halfway through the second end. I think he went back, uh, Nathan, and indicated a three would be fine as well. Short is probably the miss. He heard me. Uh, he heard Clearly, you. Clearly, yeah. yes. <laughs> so this is the first third rock of the end, uh, the second end for Sam Follett. You know, Sam will be going to the uh, Canada Winter Games uh, in, a, in a little bit of time there in PEI. Sporty, Sam's mom, Sam's mom is here, so just make sure you're, you're, gent you're kind to her son. She's I was just going to say he was going to the Canada Winter Games uh, to represent Newfoundland with Kate Patterson. So uh, good luck to them uh, in their quest to get a gold medal at the, Can the Canada Winter Games. It was funny, actually, at the Canada Games rally that uh, happened last week, I, I was the MC at it. A uh, lot of fun doing it, and when Nathan Young was on stage and got announced, Sam let a big cheer out. And then when Nathan got up, he said, that was my third. And the first thing I thought of was, wow, it doesn't take much to get cut from your team. <laughs> I quickly corrected it to, uh, it, he is my third. 
uh, it was a great event and uh, excited to watch some great curlers from the under 18s coming up next and then the Canada Games. So this one over curled a little, so Sporty, I think they're trying to roll it away. Still though, that Nathan Young Rock that's biting the forefoot is guarded very well by that three guard and now Nathan's gone up there and he's tapping uh, for a two guard. So what he also mentioned about, you know, Championship Sunday, uh, right across Canada, we've got a number of tournaments on, and when I, if I get any finals, I'll tell you, I'm not going to update in by end, but we've got the Ontario Scotties, we've got the Northern Ontario Men's and Women's, the Saskatchewan Ladies is on, I just lost internet connection, but there's a Nova Scotia, I believe there's some Alberta and Manitoba, so there's lots of curling going on right across Canada today, so there'll be lots of finals, and we'll find out who gets to go to the Briar. And the Scotties. It is that time of year, and I think uh, you get some of the some of the provincial tankers get broadcast on Sportsnet there uh, uh, next weekend, and uh, the Scotties, as you said, is coming up in mid February, and then the Briar. So, if you're a curling fan, this is a great time of year to be able to watch some high caliber curling. So, Sporty, on, on that shot there, the uh, Nathan decided to throw the other turn for Sam, and didn't, they they made the shot, but they would have liked to have curled a hair more. Um, that blue rock that's on the left there, I don't really think that was impeding their shot. So would have liked to have seen the same turn there. Uh, you know, you give it a good curler, which certainly Sam is, the same shot twice. He makes it the first time. There's a high probability he makes it perfect the second. But nonetheless, it is a guard and it is forcing a, a double peel. Only thing here now is it is staggered, so it does give Greg a chance to run this back and maybe get a double. And maybe move all three of them around, potentially. Oh, it's a good shot by Chris Ford. He has opened up the front. Uh, just an unfortunate break that that rock that uh, was sent back in the house uh, jammed because uh, they got they made contact with all three rocks. So uh, pretty good shot by Chris, but Nathan still now has the opportunity for the steal. He's going to go up there and throw the guard, and uh, uh, Greg is going to have to make a decision then as to what he wants to do next. Uh, you know, we always say when you have the hammer, you don't want to get forced. You want to try and score two, and it looks like if Greg is going to try and score two in this end, it's going to be a skip's deuce because uh, he doesn't have uh, any rocks in the house as of now. Yeah, I think right now with where that rock is too and, the, you know, how the whole end is played out, you know, Team Smith would be happy here to just take one. Absolutely. And the, the one scary part of this, Jamie, is uh, there's, there's those guards are on both sides, so if Greg has to draw the, the forefoot, uh, they may impede his path to the forefoot, so keep, we'll have to keep an eye on that when it comes down to Greg's last rock. Yeah, the left side of the sheet, there is no draw. Uh, the right side, you may have one, but uh, you know it's all going to depend on the placement of this rock here now. So this is the first rock of the second end of this men's uh, tankard final for Nathan Young, the 2022 tankard champion. Nathan actually won a gold medal in the 2020 Youth Olympics. Did and your homework, Sporty? I, like I did. It. Interestingly enough, he won that gold medal uh, during Snowmageddon. I think he got out just a couple of days before the big storm, and uh, he and his partner uh, in in the mixed doubles did win that gold medal in 2020. Uh, Sporty, this one, uh, no, great, great curling there. Right? You know, obviously, Nathan's a great curler now. With that just sliding half in, it certainly makes Greg's double pretty easy here. I'm just wondering now with a little bit of follow through and twist uh, can Greg make this double and possibly roll over and uh, nibble on that 12 foot there behind the guard if he hit it perfect? He could potentially I think Jamie uh, it's, it's, he's got to throw a bit of weight I think uh, to, to move those two they're in the top of the house but I think he could hit probably three quarters of rock and uh, roll it over there behind the corner so all of a sudden, a big opportunity for Greg Smith. If he can make this double and roll it behind the corner, all of a sudden, two is in play. And Greg with his classic backswing. Yeah, Jamie, there aren't too many guys to, nowadays who use that backswing, but he throws it uh, very effectively. So they're playing it across this way. He's got the double, and is it going to roll over? That's a pistol there by Greg Smith. That is a great shot by Greg Smith. I mean, he just seems to make those time and time again, those hits are in his wheelhouse, makes a perfect roll. And now the two is in play for Greg uh, as we were late in this second end. 
Now for for Team Young, fortunately for them, you know, you've got three guards up there, a rock top 12, so essentially four guards. You know, if they can get one, it doesn't matter if this is behind T-line, if they can get this buried and even over buried with the amount of guards, uh, they're still going to force Greg to one. So great shot by Greg, but another great shot here now by Nathan and can uh, certainly put the force on. So, Jamie, did I see the call? Was they're going to try and bring it in behind that uh, rock that's biting the 12-foot that Greg just rolled over there? I think that's the side that they are going to. Yeah, any, anywhere buried. So this is the final rock of the second in for Nathan Young. Skip of this uh, Nathan Young team that uh, finds themselves in the final of the tankard for a second year in a row. Been sweeping it the whole way to keep it straight here. They are working it pretty hard. They're on and off, Jamie, so I think they like the line. It's all about the weight at, now, I think. At this point, they should be just hammering that like they are now to make a curl. It doesn't matter if it's fine, T-Line. You want to get a force in here, and that's a really good shot by Nathan. Clutch shot. Craig's going to have a look at it here to see if there's that tap back. I think he's going to go after it, Jamie. Uh, that rock, real nice shot by Nathan Young, but it did miss that blue rock, that front rock by a few inches. So I think with a little uh, back line sort of weight, uh, Greg could make this shot. Yeah, back line sporty is the absolute max you want to throw here. One of the tendencies for a lot of teams, you know, you're you're trying to get this rock out. So the adrenaline's pumping, you got a shot for two, and you're just a little bit heavier. And as we know, the heavier you are, it adds some same straight. Uh, you want to make sure you at least score one here. So the key is going to be the weight he throws. Looks like I out of his hands, but he set it here. I don't think that's light at all, Jamie. I think it's got a fair bit of weight. And Chris Ford is working this to try and make it curl. So he was a, he was on the broom and set it here. Unfortunately, they're trying to make a curl, Sporty. He's really working it. Is he going to get a piece of it all? So no, so, he's not. So unfortunately, Sporty here, that's one of those where I think he might have thrown a hair more weight than needed. I mean, that was probably closer to hack. And unfortunately, it's a steal of one there for Team Young. It is a steal of one. So after two ends of play in this 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador men's tankard final, Team Nathan Young 2, Team Greg Smith nothing. We're going to take a break here, and we'll be back uh, with the third end. We are live uh, from the St. John's Curling Club, the Remax Center, and we are back for the third end of this Newfoundland men's tankard final uh, between Team Nathan Young and Team Greg Smith. It's a rematch of the two skips who were in the uh, final last year, and after two ends of play, it's Nathan Young two, Greg Smith nothing. If you're just joining us, Steve Sporty Bragg here in the booth alongside Olympic gold medalist, Mr. Jamie Koreb. Thanks, Sporty. Yeah, the first, uh, lots of rocks in play, the first two ends. Uh, Greg Smith, unfortunately, as you just seen, was a little bit heavy, resulting in a steal. And Team Nathan Young actually being up two here has uh, put one in the house. And we'll see a guard here from Greg Smith. Sporty, we got an update on the ladies' final. And the first end, as we mentioned, there was an unfortunate miss, and uh, Team Curtis got three. Uh, Heather, known that she need, Heather, known that she needed to uh, get a deuce back here, she does. So uh, the score over there now in the ladies' final is 3-2. to two. Team Curtis is leads by one, has handled 3-3. Jamie, it really is an exciting atmosphere down here at the St. John's Curling Club today. The place is jam-packed. Uh, you can feel the electricity in the air. Uh, it is going to be a great afternoon of curling here. Uh, we're going to write some history. Two, two teams are going to put their names in the record books as the men's and women's provincial curling champions for 2023.
So uh, here's the second rock of the end uh, for lead Ben Stringer for Team Nathan Young. He's been asked to throw a center guard. Ben is a, a student of computer science at the College of the North Atlantic. And he's made a nice shot. He's put it right there on the center line, Jamie. And it's guarding uh, the rock that's uh, in the top 12 foot, kind of biting the top 8 foot. So a nice shot there by uh, Ben Stringer. It looks like now Zach will be playing a freeze here as it comes in on the top 12. Hmm? So correction there, Jamie. Ben actually goes to Mon, not Kona. My apologies, uh, my error there. Uh, so we're back at the action here, uh, and we've got Zach Young with the Second, his second lead rock, and he's trying to attempt to freeze on the rock that's in the top 12 foot. Looks pretty good, Jamie. I expect better research out of you next time, Sporty. Yeah, I fell down on the job on that yeah, one. Sorry. I mean, the fact that I'm doing none means you need to pick it up for both of us. And that's a good shot there by Zach. So now Nathan, and I don't know if the Mr. Calder, if he's going to try to wrap around at all or if he's going to put one, you know, freeze again, get that... Uh, as I say, you've seen a lot of the Grand Slam curling sporty. You just see those rocks keeping on piling up at the, it's all about the angles here. So looks like that's what they're doing. If you ever get behind a stagger, that's a tough rock to get out. Uh, and you're always, uh, when you're a skip, those staggers can scare you, right? So uh, they're trying to come they are working it to try and get it behind those two rocks, but I don't know if it's quite going to get there. That's uh, they oh, got a great line. They need to hold off for weight now, but no, that's a... Uh, would have liked it maybe a rock higher, but uh, that's a pretty good shot there. It really forces the issue now for Team Smith. It, it was a real nice shot. Uh, and Greg, recognizing that stagger is dangerous to him, he's going to come down and play on his own rock. Uh, probably with a, I think he indicated almost like a control sort of weight and remove that yellow rock and have his two blues in the house and uh, try and generate a deuce in this third end. I was just about to say Adam Boland, the pride of Gander, but uh, we also got Ford there, so uh, the dual prides of Gander, maybe. We talked about it on a few of our broadcasts. There's a lot of people from Gander playing in this uh, uh, provincial championship. Mike Mosher, Trent Skane. Too many. Uh, just, there's too many. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're not winning any fans in Gander right now, Jamie. I can tell you that. Not trying to get elected in Gander, Sporty. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a text from Rod Feltham in about 30 seconds. I'll be shocked if he doesn't send me a message. Anyhow, Greg uh, tried to uh, knock that yellow out, or so he played, make the play on his blue, and he did get the yellow out. His, we got one blue rock, and Nathan has called for his second Nate Lock to remove that so that he can lie to. I think, Jamie, he's playing just kind of a control board sort of weight. I don't know what's going on. The audio, the, our uh, engineering guys here are chattering. I, they're just distracting me, to be honest. That's a great shot there by uh, Young... And we know you're easily distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> movie quote there. I think it was from the movie Up anyway. I don't know. No, great, uh, good position here now. So looks like uh, we're going to play a little hit and roll here. That that rock there, that yellow one, top 12 sport, is a bit of a dangerous rock. So I think you're going to see Greg try to hit and roll in here and it'll leave that yellow one open. Even if they overroll sport, and use that corner. Remember that whole... You're going to throw a corner and use it? Absolutely, yeah. And Zach Young was working it. Greg has called him off now. Is he trying to double? They played the double. Be just a preference. You know, I'd like that hit and roll over. Um, you know, you get one buried and they've got to chase you. Right now, you know, Nathan's still really the one here to hit and lie to. It's going to be the one that's uh, kind of dictating the, how the end is playing out. I don't think Greg is overly concerned about that yellow and it is in the back 12 foot now it's behind the tee line so uh, I think he's glad to have that moved off uh, where it was there in the kind of the back four uh, originally so now Nathan's going to call for uh, his third Sam Follett to play the hit on the blue they're talking about maybe just hitting and rolling out my only concern with that Jamie is then you leave the draw to uh, Greg Smith yeah, I think that, you know, you'd want to play a hit and roll in here, but uh, with that jam back there, as you said, so it's, uh, you know, taking a bit of time to figure out what they want to do here. So 
think you just called normal weight. So, Jamie, I just, just did get a text from Rod Feltham. He said we're doing good work, uh, but he did say he'd still give you his vote. So you haven't burned uh, too many bridges in Gander yet. Rod who? <laughs> <laughs> there might be another text coming. Anyway, uh, this is the shot from it's, Sam Follett. He's got a curl, Sporty. He has picked it out, Jamie, uh, but with that rock being in the back 12, I don't think you're going to see Greg make a play on that. There we go. He's tapping the ice uh, in the top four, and now he's going to get aggressive and try and get his deuce. Even if Sam would have made that shot and hit and roll to the wing, uh, you still likely would have seen, I would have liked to have seen Smith regardless. You know, you're, you're trying to get your deuce here. You're down two points. There's no point hitting rocks out on the wing. So, uh, you know, if you were forward, you were ready to throw this come around regardless of what uh, happened at Sam's rock. So Chris Ford is going to try and draw him behind that center guard. You know, uh, Fordy used to slide with the hammer for a couple of years, and he, he went to the hammer and then then went back to the regular broom. Uh, that made him only the one of two curlers in Canada who curled competitively with the hammer. So he's he's left an elite group uh, by abandoning the hammer. Yeah, I think you could call Randy Furby an elite curler. Uh, you're referring to yourself. Uh, Oh yeah, it should have been three then. Right. I forgot about Randy Furby. So, Furbs, if you're out there, I hope you're still sliding with the hammer, buddy. I know he only won about 17 briars. Yeah, a couple more than me. So, anyway, uh, the draw from uh, Chris Ford did slip uh, kind of back four, back eight. Uh, so, now Nathan has asked for Sammy. I think he's, he's still going to make a play on that and play kind of a board waiter. But they're working that hard, don't they? They should know it is. Sam threw a rock here uh, two ends ago, so they, you know, as long as they've got about the same weight as before, you know, they know this is going to be a gradual curl now. Looks like a couple more feet than what it was before, but uh, it's certainly going to be enough to get that blue rock out. The only thing with playing that hit where it was behind the, the T line, uh, Greg's got that same draw again, right? Even if he made a nose hit on it, uh, then obviously it would have given Greg some backing. That may have been an opportunity if Nathan wanted to get really aggressive where he could have put the put the draw on the top four foot and okay. gone after the steal. No question. Uh, it might be partly playing the scoreboard as well. You're up two points. You don't need to overcomplicate it. The last thing you want to do now is, you know, you're up two. You give up a three-ender. So uh, it might have been a little bit of scoreboard management there as well as, you know, either shot's fine. I personally, I always think the best defense is a good offense. So there would have been nothing wrong with that come around, as you mentioned. It's a great point, Jamie. At this level, uh, you don't see, and we, we talked about it in our last broadcast, you don't see a lot of three-enders uh, or four-enders or more than that. Uh, so you, playing the scoreboard is, is very important. It becomes a game of scoreboard management, and you're absolutely right. That's probably why Nathan made that call. And now if he can make this hit, the Chris Ford's second draw didn't get under cover. Uh, Team Nathan Young is going to lie three, and all of a sudden there's a fair bit of pressure on Greg Smith. Yeah, too. Might be lying, too. I'll get you some glasses there, Sporty, for the next podcast. Oh, yeah, I should have been looking at the monitor, not the ice, so he'll be lying, too. Not three. My bad. It's okay. You just stick to your research. I better be getting a nice meal on that green egg from you for all this research. Done. All right, so this is the first rock of the inn for uh, Nathan Young, and he is playing the hit to lie to. As we said before, Sporty, the, the weight's going to be key here. And he's, he's, certainly, uh, he's certainly not wide here, so uh, they're really working this to keep it straight. Oh, there looks like the line's pretty good now. Now they're trying to make a curl. Pretty well knows it's a good shot there. That's a real nice shot by uh, Nathan Young. So now Greg is in a situation where scoring two is not going to be easy. Uh, I don't think he can get the, I mean, they really worked that to try and get the roll at the end, Jamie. I don't think he can get the roll inside unless he throws like a hack back line weight, maybe. The other thing that I saw they talked about was hitting it on the outside and rolling over in front of those yellows. Yeah, and the 12 foot, so. He's trying to find something to do to, to generate his two points here, but as it stands right now, it's going to be a tough two for Greg Smith, and he may end up uh, being faced with the force. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, Nathan Jump first first drop that he just threw there. You can't throw it any better. You know, they barely just got to the nose there. So it's, uh, you know, even if they nose it, you know, you need to get a miss. Or if they hit and roll away, you could get that jam. And uh, at the end of the day, I think they'd be happy with a blank here. So this has got to feel like a light day for Greg Smith. These guys played 31 ends of curling yesterday. Uh, they played a three games at tiebreaker that went into an extra end and then had to come right back on the ice. And they won the semifinal against uh, Lammy, Ryan McNeil Lambswood. So yeah, and, and Sporty, that's that's probably going to be a factor in this game. You know, these teams have traveled a bit this year. Uh, you know, certainly aren't used to playing you know two and three games a day. So with Nathan Young only playing one game yesterday, and you know Team Greg Smith playing three. Uh, you know, I never. The guys aren't going to admit it, but uh, there's no question it affects you physically, and when it affects you physically, it, uh, it can only affect you mentally as well. And a lot of these events that they play now, when they go and they play two games a day, they're eight end games, they're right. not ten end games. Thirty-one ends, Jamie, is a lot of curling. Uh, so you're right that that fatigue may come into play. And Sporty, we had an update over on sheet four in the ladies' final. It was a wide open end right through. And uh, Stacy Curtis, I almost said Stacy Devereaux there, it was her maiden name. Stacy Curtis had the blank opportunity and got a little bit tight there by the look of it over curled and uh, knows it and took one. So Heather's goal of forcing here uh, was successful. So now uh, Curtis leads four to two. And Team Strong will have Hammer playing four. And for those of you who might not recognize the name Stacy Curtis, it's, it's her married name, Stacy Devereaux. And if you'll recall, if you're a curling fan, uh, back in 2007, she won the Newfoundland Junior Championships and went on to win the Canadian Junior Championships and just fell a little bit short, winning the silver medal, I think losing to Eve Muirhead in that final game in 2007. you seen that in the text I put in the group chat earlier, Sporty, didn't you? I did. Yes. You're giving away my secrets, Jamie. No but I did remember here. that. I was here at the curling club and watched that game against uh, Muirhead in 2007. So good shot there by Nathan Young back to our sheet because me and Sporty could band around all day about anything. Um, <laughs> looks like they're trying to figure out now if they can nose this and be shot. And uh, certainly if you hit and roll in a hair. Yeah, he's got to be careful, Jamie. I think he could. I think he can hit that. He just needs to flop a little bit, but the... He's, he's a little concerned about the jam on that back 12. Yeah, if, if you're if you're if you're throwing the right weight and you're making a jam, your shooter should stick around. So, you know, the nose hitter hair roll inside here is uh, is a shot you want to take your one get on the board. If the scoreboard was different, he might be able to take on the slash double and try and roll out blanket, but. He's down to nothing. He can't give up another uh, steal, so he's got to get his one here. And they are working this, Jamie, to try and get the curl. Looks like he might be on nose, if that's going to be enough. We'll see. His uh, front end put their hand up, so I think if that wasn't shot rock, Zach Young would not be as happy as he was, so I'm going to go ahead and call it blue one. I don't think Sam Follett is going to be as quick to concede that. We might see the stick come out here and have a, member, uh, a measure, and I think that's what he's calling for. Yeah, if it's close at all, it's just as well to measure, but... This is a big point, Jamie. It's either a 3 nothing game or a 2-1 game. Uh, so big, big point here in the third end of this 2023 men's Newfoundland tankard final. So you're calling it blue, are you, Jamie? Yes, from uh, all the way behind the glass <laughs> on the far end of the club, I think it's blue. Yes, we are behind the sheet, and we do have the monitors. We have the same view as you on the monitors, but uh, the, the play is at the other end uh, right now, um, so we don't have an overhead view of this. I think it is blue. Blue it is. So there you have it, one point for Team Greg Smith in this third end of the 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador Men's Tankard Final. Uh, it is now Team Nathan Young 2, Team Greg, Greg Smith 1. Uh, we'll be back in uh, a minute to, to broadcast the fourth end.
Welcome back. Uh, it is the fourth end of this two, uh, 2023 men's Newfoundland Tankard final. Team Nathan Young is up 2-1 to one on Greg Smith. As I said, we're in the fourth end. Nathan Young has hammer, and with the first rock of the end, lead Zach Young on Greg Smith's team. Uh, put up the center guard, but it's a pretty high guard. It's just over the hog line. It's a one, as we call it. And uh, now Nathan Young is attempting to come around uh, this rock. What do you think we're going to see in this end, Jamie, uh, at this stage of the game? Yeah, pretty much what we've seen right off the opening rock, Sporty. It's been a tight game. Um, you know, no one's dominated. You know, yes, Nathan Young is up 2-1. to one, But uh, they've, they've traded back and forth. So it's, uh, you know, we're going to see some rocks and plays. You see there's a guard there by... Zach, the question is now, do they want a double guard? And if you double guard, you're going to be guarding a great shot there that uh, Team Young just put in there. So I think you're going to see Greg uh, probably call a freeze here, which he is. Yeah, you're, you, obviously it's a good situation if you have two center guards and you don't have last rock. You want the middle locked up. But that rock that uh, uh, Nathan's lead through uh, is a real in a real nice position and so to throw up another guard that could create some problems for yourself so you greg has called the freeze and as it comes down the ice they seem like they feel pretty good about the weight jamie and the line looks pretty good to me as it crosses the hog line now they're really working it it's a real nice curling shot by zach young uh, absolutely frozen uh, so great great shot by by Zach you know it is championship Sunday two big NFL games today Zach is a Denver Broncos fan so he won't be worried about going in and watching the game say so, uh, they had a disaster of a year those for you taking bets on the over or under on how long it took for Sporty to bring up football is three ends so it was the over uh, and Sporty the over under on you bringing up golf is one end and you haven't brought that up so two I overs here today for anyone keeping wait till I start pulling out the WWE quotes that's when it's going to really go awry that's when we lose viewerships <laughs> great shot two good shots here from uh, these teams here you're going to see the same thing here now Greg Smith is likely going to play a freeze again Jamie, this is going to be uh, an exciting end. We got three three rocks all pretty much frozen there. Uh, center guard up, all rocks are in play. And now Adam Boland is looking to uh, keep the trend going and freeze to those three rocks that are in the house. A little bit wider than the other one so far, Sporty, judging how it's coming down. So it's going to need uh, some late curl here. Speaking of disasters of a year, Adam is a Colts fan. So that's uh, that's pretty... That's pretty tough sledding there, too. Trying to make a curl over here. The weight's good. That's four, four great curling rocks there. Wow. So now, now Nathan's got a decision to make. You know, you've got your shot. You've got basically two blue rocks frozen up there. If I'm Nathan here, I'm not liking those angles. You're either ripping that guard or you need to play a little bit of weight and make a bit of a tap here, which she... Just did, yeah. I think that's your shot. You need to play your play here, Sporty. Yeah, he looked like he looked like he uh, called to play a bit of weight on that, Jamie, and start moving those around. He's signaling now, kind of a back line sort of weight, kind of change up those angles. That, you're just looking to change the angles, exactly. So, in the fourth end here, this is a big shot to try and change the angles around by Na the second of uh, Team Young, Nathan Locke. And Benny Stringer has not left this rock. They've been on it the whole way, trying to get it by the guard here. Will they get it by, Sporty? He's just going to get by. He is going to make contact with the blue. Moves the angles around a bit. I think that was a little less weight than they anticipated, Jamie. But not a bad shot, and he's got Greg. Uh, Greg is thinking. Greg's in the way. I can't tell if it's a good shot yet or not. One second. The fact that Greg hasn't called a shot yet means it's probably a decent shot. Yeah. No, change the angles a bit. You did scoot that blue one out to the uh, eight foot. So pretty good shot there. This is one of those ends, Sporty, with you get these angles in there. Uh, choose up a bit of time, so the teams want to be cognizant of that and make sure they uh, don't get running low on time. The last thing you want in the later ends is to be uh, rushing your decisions. Yeah, that's an important point, Jamie. The time clocks came in a number of years ago, and I think it's been a great addition to the game of curling. And uh, you're right, particularly in the first couple of ends, they kind of, kind of tend to play it up and down the sheet to bank some time. Because the last thing in the world you want to be doing is going to make your 
shot in the 10th end to win or lose a provincial championship and you're against the clock. You're so. trying to make this one curl here. You really want to have your shooter and it's starting to, starting to carve over there now. Would have liked to have left a shooter there, Sporty. It's going to roll off. You do get the yellow one out of the house, which was your objective, but... So one yellow is gone, Jamie, but it is a bit of a messy end here, and uh, yeah, both look. skips are thinking. Looks like he's got a double there. He does. I think there's a pretty much a natural double. You get uh, half a rock, I guess, or... Touch the shoulder, so I think you're going to see uh, some peel weight coming in here, and he's playing the out turn. When you play uh, the turn coming into the rock sporty, you'll get a, a steeper angle. It'll come off lower. So, uh, no, they're playing the other turn. So here's the second shot of the end for Nathan Locke, who hails from Conception Bay, South Newfoundland, and he's attempting to make the double takeout. It's got to, got to curl a little bit. Just chunked it a little thicker than they wanted, Jamie. They wanted to hit the uh, hit the blue rock a little thinner. On the flip side, he did roll over, and his shooter is now frozen to the rock that's in the top of the eight foot. Greg's got no choice. He's got a Greg's got to either run back this guard or peel it off because right now it's uh, it's set up pretty good here to get a, a minimum a deuce for Team Young here. So this could be a, an early timeout if. I don't, I don't think there's a shot here, Sporty. They can do anything without removing that guard. Yeah, the play is to the center, uh, despite the fact that Nathan Young does have the hammer. But he does have three rocks behind that center guard. So it's a, you know, it's it's not often you see the team that uh, that doesn't have the hammer that's making a, a run back and the center yeah. center line guard. But uh, in this situation, I think it's a play that they have to make, and that is a long long run back. Ironically enough, Sporty, the uh, long guard by Zach wasn't a great to start the end, but as it turns out now, makes it a much tougher shot now. The longer the run back is, the tougher it is. So it looks like he might just be peeling it out, but judging by the line. Are they going to get lucky here, Sporty? The answer is yes. Yes. And uh, you've seen a smile there from yeah. Ford. Uh, usually you see a I'm sorry to the other team there, but uh, <laughs> anyway, very fortunate. Yeah, Greg uh, had a smile on his face there. He knows he got away with one there. Um, but those things happen uh, in these games. So if you're Nathan Young, you got to regroup and it's, it's a break from uh, the other team and uh, just focus on the next shot. And he does have a run back on his yellow into those two blues that are in the house. Uh, you can't call a rock and top eight a run back, Sporty. It's a double. It's, it's a, a run little, back little for run. me if I run it back two feet. I call it a run back. With your slide, it will be a run back, Sporty. <laughs> it's textbook, Jamie. Textbook. So uh, this is more of a promotion than a run back. But anyway, uh, it's got to curl a little. Makes the double. Is it get out? Wow. Yeah, that's a good shot to lie four with only three rocks remaining, Sporty. And now Greg Smith is in. Uh, spot of bother. What a great shot by Sam Follett. You know, I watch these guys, uh, Jamie, I watch these guys grow up here at the club and they've had some great success in the past couple of years and I look at Nathan and, and Sam, they really remind me of Brad and Merck when they were younger. I mean, Nathan is just so laser focused and uh, they have a great rapport and Sam obviously just displayed, he can really throw the heat and uh, you played a number of years with that team. Uh, I'm sure you saw Mark Nichols make a couple of heaters in his day. He was he was not too bad at the the, the big weight. Yeah, you see a lot of teams and, uh, you know, similarities as well, Sporty, with the coaches, with Jeff Thomas, coaching Brad through the years and now coaching Nathan Young. You know, you tap your kind of middle of your chest for normal weight, your shoulder for peel, and then Mark had the one where Brad would do the wave over the top of the head, which was the fire it basically is almost as hard as you can so i uh, know a lot of similarities for sure so we're seeing i'm gonna see a double here now there might be a triple but the triple may jam but with enough weight we'll see what chris ford got here looks like he set it a hair sporty so they're trying to make this curl just a little outward motion on that release and just with that sporty unfortunately don't get the double there so uh, nathan young's gonna have a chance to Chance to either tap here, split the house over there, and even with a, a couple doubles from uh, Team Smith, they're looking at at least a deuce probably. You, you really wanted to get at least two out of the house there. There may have been a potential triple if he hits that uh, thicker, 
now Nathan is going to go over to the other side of the house and Greg is going to find himself going back to the hack facing four with no real guards so he's going to have to he's going to have to execute a couple of really big shots to get his team out of this end so Sam's going to look to throw this one to the sweepers uh, when you're playing line out, it happens a bit on club ice, but certainly on the arena ice. When you're playing line out, it's actually a hair quicker. So uh, you want to make sure you throw this to the sweepers, and they're kind of off and on it here, so the weight looks okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any concern with the weight, Jamie. They may work it hard to try and curl it, get a bit of separation, uh, but it's a, it's a good shot. As long as they back far enough, they don't want to leave a double there, so no, it's a good shot by Sam. Is there a triple there, Jamie, if he hammers that one that's on the center line on the top 12 foot? Can he, uh, he can you can definitely remove the one on the four foot or the button, but will he get the action there on the rock? Yeah, that's what they're looking there's, at. There's a triple, uh, you know, someone like Koo Dog or Kevin Cooey um, certainly got that in their toolbox. You know, Greg's got that back swing. I don't know if he might have to get it up behind his head to get to wait for, but uh, the triple's definitely there. So the good news is there's a triple there. The bad news is if he makes it, uh, Nathan Young is going to have an open hit, and he'll be lying too, and it's going to be tough for Greg not to give up the deuce in this end. But I think at this stage of the end, he'd be happy to give up a deuce because yeah. he is in a big world of hurt right now. Main thing is here now, a, a triple, as I said, technically is there. The main thing here is, Sporty, you want to make sure you eliminate two rocks. That's your focus. If you, if you get three now, that's a bonus. We got some weight here. Nice release from Greg. They're working that, Jamie, to try and get the curl. So they don't get it out sporty. Now they are in for second shot, so Nathan's going to play on it. And, uh, you know, if, well, depending on where Nathan rolls, it's going to be hard not to leave a, a double or a triple, but Team Young are in a good position here in the fourth end, sporty. They are in a really good position. And I guess, what are your thoughts around this? I mean, if, if he hits this on the nose or just flops a little bit, it affords a, a rock that Greg can draw behind. There is that pocket over there, Jamie, those two rocks in the back of the uh, eight foot slash 12 foot where Greg may be able to draw and bail himself out if he can nestle one in there. But uh, this is gonna be really interesting in terms of where, where would you like to roll if you were playing this shot? I think you got to roll to the left, Sporty. If you roll to the right, uh, you know, there's a, a chance you could give uh, a double on the back, and depending on how you threw it, you could spin up and even be behind that rock that would be top 12. So you want to hit and roll away, and, you know, you're going to, like I said, you're going to give Smith a chance for a double or a triple, but at this point, uh, you know, you want to put the focus, put the pressure back on Team Smith. You're going to have to go for this, Sporty. It looked like uh, it was a little soft on that release by Nathan Young. Wow, Jamie, that, uh, that was a little scary. He hits that a little higher on the outside, and he's jamming into that pocket, and the end that they had built up it could be pretty much over. So Yeah, so it looks uh, like now, you know, Greg's going to have a, a fairly easy double now to give him to. Like I said, Nathan on that one looked to be just a little bit of soft on that release, and the sweepers didn't hit it early. They finally started sweeping halfway down, but at that point, it had already started to go, and that was that. I think Greg was kind of laughing, Jamie. He's, he's saying, if I really throw a heater here, can I get those two yellows and get the action to spin the rock up in the house over by that yellow? It's, I think that's what he's trying. It's not, it, he can try, but it's not there because you're just going to jam on the other <laughs> yellow. You can try it all you want. Sporty, we got an update on sheet four. Heather Strong made a nice tap back there to score her single. So now Team Curtis leads by one with Hammer, playing five. We're going to see some weight again here, Sporty. We are. With that patented uh, backswing that, uh, again, we don't see a lot of curlers use. They're on this the entire way. Zach is on this trying you to be hold careful. it okay If this now. only hits and rolls, there's going to be a three. No, he hits it on the outside. So mission accomplished here. Drop for two. Team Young. Yeah, I think when Greg went back to throw his first rock and he was facing four, he's not totally, he's, he's not happy to give up a deuce, but it could have been a lot worse. 
And as a skip, uh, Jamie, you know, you love to have these shots for a deuce, either an open hit or a draw to the house. And uh, uh, that's exactly what Nathan Young has. He just has to hit some paint and uh, he'll get the deuce and go up to a 4-1 lead after four ends of this tankard final. So Nathan is no stranger to these big moments. Uh, obviously the defending champion, uh, they've had a great run the past couple of years. He's gonna focus in and make sure he makes this. When you have an opportunity like this, Jamie, as a skip, you have to take advantage of it. You can't miss these shots. No question, Sporty. So, you know, coming in here now, we're, looks like they're on and off it. Do we know Pebble breaking down here this early in the game, if ever here, but they're going on a little bit. They, they made it. I don't think their parents are overly happy with a little bit of the palutations they gave them. But nonetheless, we get a deuce here. That puts Team Young up 4-2 to two after one, Sporty. After five. After four, Jamie. After four. So we're, uh, we are at the 2023 Newfoundland men's tankard, the final game uh, to decide who goes to the Tim Hortons prior, and it's Team Nathan Young four. Team Greg Smith won after four ends. We'll be back in a minute with the fifth end. So we are back uh, live in the 2023 Newfoundland Men's Tankard Final. It's the Men's Provincial Curling Championships. We're broadcasting live from the St. John's Curling Club, the REMAX Center, in the booth today. It's uh, Steve Sporty Bragg along with Olympic gold medalist Jamie Korab. Jamie, I think it's a good time to uh, recognize our team and all the volunteers who've, uh, who've been a part of this 2023 uh, Tankard and Scotty's Championships. Uh, there's a number, number of people downstairs, the timekeepers, the umpires, the volunteers. And from our perspective, uh, we've had the opportunity to be in the broadcast booth. Myself, you, Kathy Cunningham, Jeff Cunningham, Rob Thomas, and Mark Noseworthy. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in the booth, uh, but there's a really great team behind uh, the microphones here and uh, we have our technical director Trevor Bartlett who's been here all week uh, producers John Barron and Emily Neary uh, they've been producing some of our games to see these great shots when you go online the camera stream is awesome the picture is great they're changing the views uh, they, they got our mics ready so They've all done a really great job. We also got in the uh, in the booth today, helping us out with a little technical support. Uh, the one and only Andrew Bull Manual. So, uh, just a great team. Want us to give a big shout out to uh, all of those people. Uh, they make us look good, Jamie, which is definitely not an easy feat. They make us sound good, Sporty. There's nothing they can do for making us look good. Uh, we will have Bull joining us in probably an end or two. He's going to talk about one of the spiels we have here in the Rick Rosa Classic. So I'll just tee it up for that, and we look forward to chatting with you later. Bull, you can uh, you don't even have to move. You're actually sat right next to me. You're a little too close to me, actually, to be <laughs> honest. And, Jamie, I was telling the story. So uh, Bull and I curled together for a number of years, and we were traveling to the Jim Sullivan spiel. Uh, we flew into Halifax and we're driving to uh, St. John, New Brunswick. We just happened to be chatting. We were chatting about Must See TV and our favorite shows. I was a big Cheers fan. And then, boom, it hit me. Night Court. You remember Night Court? Richard Mole, Bull the Bailiff. And there it, there it was. From that point forward, he was for, forever known to me as Bull Manual. And now that sporty story is done, we're halfway through the fifth end. <laughs> um, no, we're into the lead rocks here. Uh, we had the first rock come in 
uh, a little bit deep, and then we had uh, corner guard go up. And now glad to see that Team Smith are using that corner guards because, as I say, Sporty, if you're going to throw a corner, you should use it. Absolutely, Jamie, and uh, Greg is going to do everything he can. Now he, he probably feels pretty lucky to have gotten out of that fourth end with only giving up a deuce, so he'd love nothing more than to get the deuce right back uh, going into the fifth end break. And Sporty, well, we got a second here now, and Nathan Young's team gets ready to throw this uh, quiet weight shot. We've got some, uh, as you said, across the country here now, we've got some ladies Scotties. Um, final setup. Get Nancy Martin and Robin Robin Silvernagel out of Saskatchewan. They're going to be playing in the final eight today. Krista McCarville and Krista Burns out of Northern Ontario. I'm just going to hit pause on that for a second. They're really working this one, Sporty, to get it by, and it's oh, it's Sporty. We're on a time delay. Sporty, relax. You are. And now they're by. <laughs> Sorry to the viewers. I keep uh, forgetting the time delay. There's a, there's a there's a second delay. It's mostly for your language, which has been an issue all <laughs> provincials long. Jamie, we're having fun here this afternoon. What can I say? He did get by the guard and uh, made that shot and uh, rolled the shooter, I think. So nice, nice shot there by Nate Locke. Yeah, great shot. Great sweeping. I, I'm giving credit there to the sweepers. Nate, let's face it, Nate was tight. It was the sweepers made that for him. It was the lead. <laughs> I'm taking credit for that as a sweeper. Front end union. I am playing lead as well, uh, Jamie, this year. So uh, are you? I've uh, I've dusted a few nice rocks uh, throughout the course of the season. You're about three. You're about th two to three years away from being fifth, sporty. By the sounds of it, <laughs> you started a skip, worked your way through. Same thing I'm, happened to me. I'm actually. in shape. Round is a shape. Anyhow, let's uh, get back to the action. Nice uh, shot there by uh, Adam Boland. Does get remove one rock, but did not quite get the double. And uh, Nathan's going to call now to. Uh, hit this rock and uh, he'll be lying three after this shot, Jamie. Yeah, just to come back through a sporty, just go back to where I was two before here in the Manitoba playdowns, Jen Jones and Abby Arkland are in the final and then coming out of Northern Ontario on the men's side. We're gonna have someone different out of Northern Ontario sporty. There's no Brad Jacobs coming out this year. Sandy uh, McEwen and Tone, uh, Tanner Horgan are in the final of Northern Ontario. I'd be interested to know. I mean, he won a number of those championships in a row. I think he won the Briar in 2013, if memory serves me correct, and then went on to win the gold medal in 2014 in the Olympics. Uh, so I'm assuming he at least won every Northern Ontario uh, championship other than after winning the, the uh, Briar. Correct. So he, he had a good stringer. And now he, he was in this, but it wasn't with his normal team. As you know, they... Uh, you know, his cousin uh, EJ plays with Brad, and a number of them went on to other teams. So he did have a team, but it wasn't certainly wasn't a, a team he usually plays with. But uh, so Bolin got a nose hit here. Back to our game, Sporty. Yeah, they're just trading hits right now. Um, Greg has got to try and generate some sort of offense here. Uh, Nathan's calling, looks like, for the big weight. And uh, might be lying three again after this shot. Can yeah. you hit that on the nose, Jamie, and still be biting the uh, house? Most certainly. No sit, even a hair high, and you can still stick around here. That's uh, fully in the house there. So, you know, right now it's, it's looking like, you know, Smith needs to engineer a deuce here or he's going to get forced. So a nice shot there by the third on the Nathan Young team, Sam Follett. Uh, Sam, they tell me, is a St. Louis, St. Louis Blues fan. I was checking the standings. Why? Dave, uh, just to see if they were into Connor Bedard sweep, sweepstakes. But, uh, is that a dad really thing? Is his dad a St. Louis? Had, yeah. There's no reason you cheer for St. Louis yeah. on this. No. They did win a cup a couple of years ago, Jamie. So, yeah. uh, uh, But I don't think they're quite going to get into the Connor Bedard sweepstakes unless they really mail it in in the second half of the season. St. Louis got a big arch. That's pretty much what they're known for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just a big bridge, arch bridge. Anyway. Look, looks like you're not getting any votes in St. Louis either. Or out in Tor Bay. Where is it the Follett's live? Where do you guys live? All right, back to the game here, Where? Jamie. Paradise? I'm not running to Paradise either. Nope. So Chris Ford has thrown a nice shot there, Jamie. He took out that uh, Nathan Young counter, and he rolled in behind the rock on top of the 12-foot. It is just sticking out there, so uh, I think they're going to have to play a, a, a shot close to that top yellow to remove the blue. No, that was a great shot there. That was, you know, you throw the right weight, you bring the sweepers in play. And uh, just said, trying to force the issue here now. So 
Sam's got to play a... You can see probably about half of that sporty. The weight's going to be key here, because this will curl a little off center line. One he's, thing I've noticed... He's a little about... wide of the broom, but his... Uh, one of his players has said that he's the weight's a little bit down, so... Yeah, they're saying it's a little down, but one of the things I've noticed about this uh, Nathan Young team, they really have a good control of their weight. They've been throwing a lot of control weight hits during the game, but then when they need to uh, take the weight up or soften it up, like right there, uh, they're able to do that, and a real nice shot by Sam Follett. You know, I see them when they're down practice, and they practice with Jeff Thomas, and they got the clocks out, and I think they spend actual practices, you know, all board weights, all big weights, and they just have a really, really good control of their weight, and uh, real nice shot again there by uh, Sam Follett. Yeah, no, great, great shot by Sam. St. Louis is a beautiful uh, city, by the way. I just got a text that maybe his sister was born there, so nothing but love for St. Louis. You gonna run for mayor there? Or? Not Anyhow. running for mayor anywhere, so <laughs> sporty. <laughs> so we've got Team Smith now. Looks like they're gonna they're gonna use that corner guard. They're gonna they use are, the they are guard. gonna go behind the corner guard. He's really going after his two points right now. So he's asked his third, Chris Ford, to uh, make the draw. Uh, he can get in there for a shot, and then the two will be alive. They are working it pretty hard, Jamie, as it comes down the ice. Well, it's a pretty good shot here. Yeah. Line's pretty good. It's a very gradual curl. They've thrown one here two ends ago that didn't didn't quite get over, so it's very gradual in this spot here. But That's a pretty good shot there. That's a real nice shot by Chris Ford. It's pretty much right on the T line. Great weight. Good call. Uh, good judge on the weight by the uh, sweepers. And now all of a sudden the deuce is in play, Jamie. And that St. Louis correction was brought to you by Quick Prince. Thank you, Paul Curry. And Sporty, I mentioned to Scotty's, we also have two other teams are already uh, booked their ticket to Kamloops. We've got Kerry Galusha out of the territories, and Suzanne Bird, I believe, yesterday won her uh, at least a dozen. Now she's won Scotty, so we'll have Suzanne Bird back at the Scotty's Tournament Arts. And Kerry Galusha, as well, out of the territories, she's got to have a number of uh, provincial championships. Uh, Territorial championships. Or territorial championships. And, and right. uh, did a game earlier uh, with the Sarah Hill team. Of course, Kelly Sharp plays on that team. And she played in three Scotties with Kerry Galusha when she uh, spent some time up in the territories. So I think they've, uh, Team Young's decided they don't want to have a go at that. They're going to rip this corner guard. So, Jamie, you ripped the corner guard. I guess Greg then goes over and draws behind that yellow uh, on the other side of the house, and he's going to try to get his deuce. Yeah, th this is, you know, scoreboard management, you know, at its best. You know, Nathan looked at it. We could try to have a go at this rock in the house, but if you miss it, you're looking at three. Get rid of this corner guard, and uh, the most that Team Greg Smith are going to get is two. You know, fifth end break, you're up two with Hammer. Uh, I think if you asked Team Young at the start of this game, would you take that scenario? You'd take it all day, so... Scoreboard management, good uh, veteran call there by the young Nathan Young. Yeah, you don't want to get into a situation where you play a shot that's too cute and then you bring three into the mix. So exactly. uh, it is looking like a good opportunity for Greg Smith to score two. I uh, made it five ends thing. before I said exactly. I promised myself I wouldn't do the Russ Howard and say exactly seven or eight times. Russ, if you're listening, you're old. <laughs> So, Jamie, uh, Greg is going to throw his first rock here of this fifth end of the Tankard final. He uh, wasted no time in putting his broom down and is drawing to the other side of the house, try to get Paula's separation yeah, and you set up the two points. You don't need to be cute here. You know, he basically wants to keep this above T-line. Uh, you don't even need to have it buried. You just want to kind of have it edge on edge. You don't want to leave Nathan Young a chance to hit and roll to the right and get shot. But uh, they're trying to make a curl here. Yeah, they want to bring that. The other blue rock is on the T line, so they want to bring it to the T line so that there is no double. And I think mission accomplished. Yeah, no, it's it's a good shot. You want to. Uh, they would have liked to have it a rock over, so Nathan doesn't have this hit and roll. And Nathan would have to be careful if he did try to play that hit and roll. Uh, there is a jam possibility if you over curl. So uh, you know, again here, giving him giving Smith two is fine. Smith will take two. 
don't get me wrong, it'll be a successful end for Smith. But uh, I think for Team Young here, they want to just make a go away, give Smith two, and go into the fifth end break. Yeah, Nathan was originally looking at that roll, but you're right, the jam is there. You don't want to fool with that right now. Uh, just uh, even a nose hit, Jamie, is fine. Uh, make it go away. Greg gets to do sure up one with Hammer, as you suggest, uh, going into the fifth in break. Sporty, speaking of fifth in break, the uh, ladies' championship final, a nice four. Curtis scored a single in five to go up two, so Heather Strong will be coming into the sixth end. Down one, down two points, sorry, but with Hammer. All right, rocks away for Team Young. So Nathan is really bringing the heat on this one. I think he's trying to get action over on the blue over in the 12 foot. And he did get an inside roll, Jamie, but uh, Greg's going to have an open hit for two, and we'll get right back in this game. So, Sporty, both of these teams will consider this end a success. You know, Team Young, you know, would have liked to force them, but giving up a two again with scoreboard management. And then you've got uh, Team Greg Smith here. Their goal was to get a deuces end. You're not going to get them all back right away. So you want to get your two, force, get your two. So uh, open hit here for Greg. And I got a text from a friend of mine who uh, has been listening to the broadcast. She's been enjoying the banter back and forth. And she did say the squirrel comment that you mentioned earlier comes from Ice Age. The Ice, Age. Ice Age. There it is. Knew it was a kid's movie. Knew it was yeah. Pixar. I'm, I'm Bull here is telling me that it's up. I think it might be both movies. But anyway, I do get distracted easily. So they're uh, the rocks away. Doesn't seem like much panic. They're trying to make a curl now, Sporty. And that's on the nose. That's a good shot by Team Smith. The score, too. It is two, in fact, for Greg Smith. Uh, so we're going into the fifth end break here. It's the 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador Men's Tankard Provincial Curling Final. We're broadcasting live from the St. John's Curling Club. And at the fifth end break, it's Team Nathan Young 4. Team Greg Smith 3. We'll be back in a few minutes to bring you 6 to the next.
Welcome back. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the St. John's Curling Club, the Remax Center, and we are in the sixth end of this 2023 Newfoundland Men's Tankard Curling Provincials uh, Provincial Final. And in this final, we've got uh, Team Nathan Young, defending champion, who is leading Team Greg Smith four to three as we play the sixth end. Uh, if you're just joining us, Steve Sporty Bragg here in the booth. Alongside of me, cooking aficionado, Olympic gold medalist, Mr. Jamie Korab. I like that cooking part. Thanks, Sporty. Yeah, it's the second half of the game now where, you know, this is where the pressure really starts to kick in. And uh, just went downstairs, Sporty, as we're upstairs, and they have the table laid out with all the Newfoundland, your Purple Heart, which is what these teams want, and your Newfoundland coats. So uh, all these players would have seen that before the game started. And most players at a fifth end break would have went in and seen it and wanted to get their hands on those red and white jackets. So uh, we're in for a treat here in the next uh, five ends, 40. Yeah, looking forward to uh, a great second half of this game. Uh, right out of the blocks, uh, uh, Greg Smith is going to come in the house here and attempt to freeze uh, on the Nathan Young Rock. He threw the center guard up. The center guard's a little high. It's in the one position. Nathan drew in and drew to the top of the eight, just biting four. And now Greg is going to attempt to freeze on that rock. Sporty, just in the break there, uh, Evan Curley has been taking stats here in this game. So he said after five ends, Team Nathan Young curled 84%. And after five, Team Greg Smith were curling 71%. So uh, Edge certainly to Team Young in the stats. And obviously it's reflected as well in the scoreboard being up one with. Thanks for that, Jamie. And Zach on his... Uh Freeze attempts just came up a shade light, but a pretty good shot. It's in a good spot. It's on the top of the eight foot, and it is, does have a corner uh, position on that yellow. Uh, and now Nathan, we saw this, uh, I think it was two ends ago, Jamie, and in the uh, uh, fourth end, there was a couple of freezes, uh, three or four freeze attempts in a row, and it looks like we're going to see the same thing in this end. We are this time now. We've got the out turn throw into the mix, and just out of the hand, it doesn't look light. Sweepers haven't touched it yet. Look like a little bit of an extension out of his hand. It's starting to curl now. Sweeping in there, that's a great shot there. That's a real nice shot by the lead of the Nathan Young team, Ben Stringer. Ben uh, works at Dominion uh, when he's not here at the curling club. Stringer, for any of you Jay on my fans out there. So Jamie, uh, it looks like Greg has opted for another freeze and we're going to get a lot of rocks in play in this six end. Uh, he's calling for his second Adam Boland to uh, try and freeze on that top yellow. It's a big year for Adam Boland. Adam is getting married in July to fellow curler Sarah Hill. And obviously, given that they're both curlers, you knew it was going to be a summer wedding. It wouldn't be between September and uh, April. Did you get invited to that wedding, Sporty? I don't think I've received the invitation yet. Bull, uh, I think Bull Manuel is saying it's an open uh, open invitation to everyone here that's here in the curling club today or listening online uh, across the province or across the country. I'm not paying that tab. So we've got, uh, looks like Nathan's going to probably just try to throw a quietish weight and stay right on the nose here. Looked a little tight out of the hand there, Sporty, and Nathan called him on it right away. Stringer trying to keep this straight. Looks like he did because now they're not sweeping. That's a really nice shot there, Sporty. That is a nice shot, and a couple of those yellows are up on top of the house. So one is pretty much frozen to the uh, blue, so Greg is going to have not, none of this. And again, we said this in the fourth end. It's a it's an interesting situation when you have the ha or don't have the hammer and you're running uh, the center guards. But he's going to try to run this straight back into that mess that's in the uh, top of the 12 foot. And Chris Ford is working this hard to try and hold the line. And unfortunately, Jamie it just over curled. Uh, so he he did leave the guard, which. 
you know, it, it's it's still almost the center guard, and that's something that Greg needs if he's going to try and steal. But it's a little scary. There's three yellows in the house to one lonely blue at this point in time. So just had the stats handed over to me here so far that uh, they're unofficial stats. Evan Carley did them, so I'm sure they're bang on. But uh, Nathan Young and Greg Smith, both after five, are both curling 78%, so uh, nothing between them there. Sam was uh, just out curling the uh, Chris from the other team. And uh, Ben and Zach were pretty well tied. Big difference right now is at second positions. We've got Nathan Locke curling 95%. He's hardly missed a shot. Uh, and he's uh, right now out curling Adam Boland. So that's where we're seeing a difference right now, Sporty, is at second position. Yeah, so maybe uh, he did get a little bit of a roll, Jamie. There's two yellows frozen. He's got Greg thinking. He, I think you mentioned Nathan is curling. Nate Locke's curling 95%. 95%. That is some high caliber curling. And we've seen some high caliber curling all week. Uh, I know Nate, uh, they tell me he's got a cabin. And when I asked where it was, they said it's somewhere in the woods. So he likes to spend time wow. out in his cabin. In the woods. In the woods. Wow. In the woods. Is that but, where they are? <laughs> believe it or not. And then but it was, uh, he, I guess he hails from parts unknown, but he likes to go out in that cabin and get some relaxation time and obviously it's translating time. into some great curling today 95 percent the only time you see 95 percent sporty was on an accountant's test i'd say <laughs> i didn't even see it there jamie to be quite frank so uh no but that's a you know to, to come up in a, in a championship game and be throwing 95 percent in the first half of the game that's uh, that's some stellar curling and as i said jamie the caliber of curling here uh, in newfoundland is, it's, we're, we're at a really high level. There's a lot of good junior teams coming up. It is a great junior program here. I attribute uh, some of that to uh, the great junior program that's here. And all of these curlers work really hard at their games. And uh, we've seen the results of it this week. Is, uh, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic and exciting week of curling. Yeah, and, you know, there's a number of reasons for that, Sporty. You know, the ice, ice plays a factor in this. Um, you know, one of the things that Brad and his team have done here is that, you know, these teams, juniors, the men's, the women's, they get to see Brad and them, what they do in practice. You know, I, I was down here the other day throwing rocks, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, Team Skeins and the boys had the speed traps out and the timers and all that and lasers. So uh, there's that, you know, the other big thing here is the, the coaching. We've got some amazing coaches here. they got their, you know, top levels you can get. Um, on paper, but also just amazing coaches that, you know, can really help develop a team strategically, setting up practices. So, uh, no, uh, our numbers aren't as high as many other places in Canada, but we certainly uh, we certainly got some quality curlers here. We do, for sure. And uh, this is developing into a real interesting end, Jamie. Uh, those two blues are lying one and two. Nathan's tapping on that uh, blue that's on the center line as if to say they can access that and probably make the double. He's got pretty tight ice there, so I think you're gonna see some uh, some big weight, uh, or some firm weight from Sam Follett, and if, if you want someone throwing some big weight, Sam Follett's a pretty good guy to have throwing that weight. Yeah, I don't think there's any issue. If you hit a good quarter of this rock, those blue rocks should spill out, so and it's not gonna curl a whole lot. I think Sam was just a hair tight and got it back, but he should be fine. You see it fall off that center line? Yeah, he got a little out there, Jamie. Uh, he did remove one of the blue rocks and got the other one moving just a, just a shade outside, but uh, he's got two of those moving. Greg still has a problem in that those two yellows are almost frozen and they are you know, partially covered by that uh, high guard. Uh, so he's looking at making some sort of play on those, I believe. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to try to get rid of both of those yellow sporty, you're going to lose your shooter. And then obviously that gives uh, advantage back to Team Young. So it be interesting now if he tries to play the double roll out or if he's just going to try to kind of nose nose. But they're two dangerous rocks there because they're about half buried and you've got uh, Team Young up one with hammer. That's the key part here is Team Young has hammer. This ends sporty. Yeah, we're getting to a point, we talked about it earlier, at this level, uh, we're into the second half of the game, scoreboard management becomes very important, and uh, so some of your calls are going to be dictated by that, uh, based on what the scoreboard is. So, so looks like they're uh, playing a double here, you've seen Greg Smith there just warm up that 12 foot, 
You're not allowed to sweep behind the. You're not allowed to sweep above the T line of the other team's rocks. But when they're not throwing, you can. So you just seen him warm off the top 12. Good throw here by Ford, and gets rid of those rocks pretty easily, Sporty. Wow, that's a nice shot by Chris Ford. He is playing at a high level this week too. I've had the opportunity to broadcast a couple of his games, and he's played some really good curling. Of course. Chris was on the 2019 team that represented Newfoundland at the Briar and Brandon, Manitoba. But also, Chris skipped the team in 2017 that won the bronze medal in the Canadian Mixed. So he is no stranger to uh, the big moments, and that was a real nice shot by Chris Ford. So just playing an open hit here now. You know, as much as Team Young would love to score a deuce here in this even end, uh, they'll be happy with a blank. Any, any time you can pick off a few ends here, Sporty, keep hammering the lead. That'd uh, be uh, good for Team Young. So unfortunately, Sam has rolled out on that. And uh, as a result of rolling out, now it's an open house uh, with that one guard up there. And Greg has the opportunity on his first rock to uh, get in behind that guard and try and generate possibly a steal. Or a force. Yeah, that's those little half shots we talked about earlier in the broadcast, Sporty, that can really change an end. You make that nose hit, Greg naturally has to hit it with that rollout. Now you give Greg that opportunity to come around and get one buried, and then that puts the pressure back on uh, Nathan Young for his first rock at his sixth end. So Greg... Uh as I said, I referred to earlier, he lost the final of the tanker last year. He did win the semifinal against Alex Smith, who I'm playing with now. And on that team, that Alex Smith team, uh, Zach Young was on that team. And now, uh, after beating Zach in the, in the uh, semifinal last year, Zach finds himself on the team with Greg trying to win his first uh, trip to a briar. A lot of these teams know each other, and there's always a lot of different combinations, for sure. So trying to curl it over there, a little bit deeper than they probably wanted. I think Sporty, they probably, they probably got about half of it to the three quarters of a berry, but there should be enough room there with that guard distance that uh, Nathan can come down and make a hit here and try to roll away. And just see, uh, Follett asked Ben on the other end, how much can you see? And, just going back to the beginning of the end, the first guard that was thrown up there, I think by Zach, uh, now that one was since hit and rolled over, but it was a high guard. And this goes to show you how important the lead rocks are. Uh, particularly when you're show throwing those guards, you want to get them a little tighter to the house. Uh, that is a guard out there, but it's, it's pretty hard to hide behind because it's such a high guard. With the curl on this ice, you can access even a rock that's fully buried uh, with you know kind of a board sort of weight. Yeah, you want to get your, your guards deep as a lead and get them nice and tight. It's probably why I got kicked off the team last time with Brad and the boys, but it's probably one of many reasons why I got kicked off that team. I mean, I walked away from the team. I'm joking, no. But, uh, yeah, you, it, rock placement is huge here. So this looks like a good shot here by Nathan. Hit and roll away. This is key sporty to roll away because you're, you're forcing Greg Smith now to hit that naturally. And if Greg... Uh, so... Someone doesn't know how to count. <laughs> Chris Ford, a little right in the face here now. Thought the end was over, says sorry. Kicks the rock away. I think it was a little closer to the center line and more up by the Kitty Vitty. So they're going to ask the, you can see Greg Smith doing the cross there. They're going to ask for the time to be stopped. They're going to ask for official now to come out and put the rock back. Chris Ford has sheepishly tucked his tail and ran to the other end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't blame him. <laughs> And he obviously said something to Zach Young because uh, <laughs> they're having a good chuckle about that. It's one of those things, Jamie, you're just caught up in the moment. You're so focused on the game, and uh, he just happened to give that rock a little kick, thinking the end was over. So uh, I, I mentioned earlier the umpires, the volunteers that we have. Uh, Sandra Sparrow there is going to come out on the ice now and uh, try and get that rock back in the position that it was. If it was in an arena here with the heat, you'd actually be able to see the ring that the rock left there. But um, I think they've all agreed that uh, it's in close enough 
place. We could actually use video replay here, Sporty, on YouTube and go back and tell them exactly where it's to, but that would require one of us getting up and going downstairs, and let's face it, that's not happening. It would also require, I think, them to rewind and take us off the stream. And with the viewership that we have now, the ratings are high. we we got to keep it going. Buddy. The dozens and dozens. And, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But there's uh, we've had some great viewership across here, so we appreciate everyone uh, watching. If you have complaints, you can send it to Mick Advisory. That's Sporty Bragg. Any complaints, send us Sporty Bragg or Held Walters. It's his fault. He almost lobbed it up for me for my first wrestling quote uh, of the day for the millions and millions out there listening. Uh, we wouldn't want to wouldn't want to shut down the stream. Wasn't World Rumble last night, Sporty? It was. Don't talk about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I watched it on PVR till 2:30 this morning when I got back from the Arts and Culture Center. I'm not shocked. All right, we got Team Smith here trying to make that roll, and he hits and rolls. And it's a pretty good roll. I think you're going to see Greg Smith now go and say that that blue guard actually was over a foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Nathan, will, uh, on his last rock, he'll just go up there and peel that out, Jamie, and take the blank end after six uh, and take the hammer going into the seventh end. And, and just in case you were wondering, uh, Rhea Ripley won the wasn't, Royal Rumble. Wasn't and, uh, wasn't wondering, actually. Wasn't the American Nightmare, Dust, or, uh, Cody Rhodes. I'm in a nightmare, I'm in a nightmare right now talking about this. <laughs> Um, with back to this, we'll get to the wrestling later. Wrestling, uh, Nathan Young here. It's a pretty easy peel. The only thing sporty is, you know, that blue rock guard. That blue guard is really not in play for making a peel, but it's in his eye. He can see it when he, he's throwing out. So you can just see him taking an extra second here, which I like to see. Let's try to get this blank end. It's a good point. You really got to get in and get set. This is a big shot because uh, a blank end. You're one end closer to uh, a tanker championship. You're you're going into the seventh end with a one-point lead with the hammer, so he just has to make sure that he uh, makes this rock. Looks like a pretty good release, Sporty. They swept it early to keep it straight. Now they're sweeping to make a curl, and now they're sweeping to keep it straight. And it looks yeah, the like room's it's a go in the air. good shot there from Nathan Young. Didn't overthrow it through a nice firm weight. Blank ends, 40, six in. It is. It's a blank end, so we're six ends into this 2023 men's Newfoundland Tankard Provincial Curling Final. Uh, and the score after six ends of play, Team Nathan Young, four. Team Greg Smith, three. We'll be back in a minute with the seventh end. So welcome back. We're here in the seventh end of the 2023 men's uh, tankard final. Uh, Nathan Young is up four to three. We just saw a blank end in six. So we are on the first rock of the seventh and uh, lead Zach Young has thrown up the center guard. Nathan's gonna tap the ice and go in behind. Uh, in case you're joining us, is Steve Sporty Bragg here in the broadcast booth with uh, Olympic gold medalist Jamie Korab. But right now uh, we have Andrew Bull Manuel who stepped into the broadcast booth uh, we see that there's a lot of people listening to the broadcast today. We appreciate that. Hope you're enjoying it. And, and, and Andrew, you just want to tell us a little bit about, uh, we assume there's a lot of competitive curlers out there, and uh, a special event here at the St. John's Curling Club is the Rick Rousseau Classic. Yeah, thanks, Stevie. Uh, yeah, we've, every September, we host uh, the Rick Rousseau Classic. I think we're going to be up to our fourth annual. Uh, coming this September and uh, certainly as any, anybody who's watching this curling can attest we've got some supreme ice here that uh, would be available to especially those out of province teams that are looking for some uh, highly competitive curling uh, to k kick off their uh, travel season so we're asking you to book your calendars now and uh, yeah line yourself up for a trip to Hardy St. John's and uh, enjoy a little bit of our hospitality as well as our curling. 
And Andrew, we did that uh, event really grew uh, this year. We had a great turnout this year and uh, want to make that even bigger and better. Uh, in the upcoming uh, upcoming years. Indeed, yeah, we've uh, we've certainly upped our game with respect to sponsorship and uh, you know support for a uh, high quality tournament. Uh, we've uh, Johnson's Insurance is on board with us, as well as uh, Browning and Harvey uh, with Pepsi, and uh, we're hoping to expand our uh, sponsorship again this year. And we're hoping for a um, you know a, a pot of in excess of of thirty thousand. We're, we're targeting. And we're hoping to get a feel of uh, 16 men's teams and 16, uh, 16 women's. Uh, so again, for any of you competitive folks out there looking for a, a great spiel to kick off your year, make sure you book your tickets now to come to St. John's. And if you did want to reach out just to uh, inquire about um, you know, any of the logistics or just wanted to chat with any of the organizers, uh, it's our, our email. I'll just bring it up there quickly. Is uh, it's Rick Rousel Classic at gmail.com, and that's again Rick Rousel Classic at gmail.com. So feel free to reach out if you got questions, uh, or if you you know you you want to get things organized for yourself, we'll be happy to chat with you. Well, thanks for that, Andrew, and uh, joining that spiel. We actually had the broadcast team, and we look forward to doing that again and broadcasting across Canada, and hopefully. Uh, uh, like I said, the event will be bigger and better. So thanks for your time on that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Gordy. So we're live here in the seventh end. Uh, center guard went up uh, from Zach Young. Uh, ben Stringer came, I think, back eight. Uh, that's the rock that you see there in the back eight. Uh, and uh, then the, uh, the, the rock from uh, lead, uh, Zach Young, again, uh, came up in the top 12. They came around that to the button. And uh, we've got five rocks in play now, Jamie, uh, that are all around the center area, so it's a little cluttered. It's going to be interesting to see what the guys call on this rock. Yes, yeah, similar thing we've had uh, all game, getting that guard up and all the play in the middle. Uh, you know, just one of two things there on... Uh, with you know a uh, bull mentioned there andrew you know one he has a, a face for radio uh, sorry a voice for radio uh as well as you know but the second being the rick rousel classic is uh, a lot of people who know in the curling community is named after rick rousel who's fortunately no longer with us i had the pleasure of curling with rick i think it was back in 2012. uh great guy someone that certainly missed around the curling community so to have a a great curling event here named after rick uh i know it means a lot to a lot of players and the teams that play in it and win it, it means a lot to them as well so Great, uh, great to have a spiel like that, and people like Andrew and that that are organizers behind it, keeping that going. Yeah, it's a great way to honor Rick. Uh, for those of you who, know, who knew Rick, he's just a, an all-around great guy. Played two briars for Newfoundland in 96 and 2000, I believe. Uh, one of my best curling memories was actually losing to Rick in the uh, semifinal of the 2019 uh, Newfoundland tankard. We lost in an extra end. Bull was on our team, and Rick made an absolute pistol on his last rock at the 11th end to win the game and I remember turning around and giving him you know we gave each other a big hug and I wished him well in the final uh, he would go on to lose that final to Andrew Simmons in 2019 but uh, just a heck of a guy we lost him way too soon and uh, just a fantastic way to honor him so thanks Andrew and your committee for uh, all the work that you're doing on that spiel and to put a light twist on it sporty the fact that you losing is a one of your greatest curling mem memories says a lot about your Curling career. That's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but I uh, kid. You have three provincial championships. I do have three provincial championships. So, so we've got uh, some uh, with Team Smith here, Sporty. They've uh, all decided to go up and have a, a gander, pun intended, um, at that. Uh, what's going on up in the other end there? So what do you think you're talking about here, Jamie? What do you like if you're uh, Greg Smith right now? What color is Greg, Sporty? I'm, I'm joking. Um, if you're blue here now, um, you've, you know, you've got a couple options. You can throw some heat at that blue rock there. But I think you really need to be what you just seen, I believe it was Ford, uh, just tap that blue rock. I think you need to be really trying to promote your blue rock. Um, but you've got to get one of yours in there or run something back because uh, we're halfway through the end here and... As we know, Team Young has hammer. Sporty, just a quick update while we're out there taking a second. We had a big development over in our ladies' final. Over on sheet four, Team Strong uh, got a three-ender. You know those three-enders that you say never happen, Sporty. Uh, so Heather, Team Strong gets a three-ender to actually take a one-point lead. So here now playing seven. Team Curtis is down one with. So we got quite the game as well over on sheet four. Those three-enders don't happen when you have me playing, let me tell you. So... 
anyway, uh, getting back to this ice, uh, Jamie, I really I, I like the call that you made. I like the tap on that blue. Uh, I don't like throwing a lot of heat. You've got a lot of clutter around the forefoot, which is not a bad thing when you don't have hammer. I think Greg has to go after a steal here. So uh, I like that tap, and it kind of looks like it's maybe a little tight ice for a tap, but that may be what they're playing. Yeah, if you're if you're throwing top four T line weight, uh, it could be a little bit of tight ice. But one of the things here we I've, we've seen all game sporty is that uh, sweepers can really impact him on a curl. So uh, if they're throwing back four ish weight with a bit of sweeping there from Zach on the right. I think they'd be fine. So this is the second rock of the end for the uh, Greg Smith second. Uh, Adam Boland. Adam's a big Blue Jays fan, so I guess he's looking forward to the baseball season starting soon. I know he follows it a lot, and it looks like he's got a really nice rock coming down here. Well thrown rock there. Promotes it up there sporty and locks it just about right on that yellow. Great shot there by uh, Boland. Greg Smith is pretty happy about that rock. He raised his broom. I thought it was going to go through the ceiling. That was a really nice shot by Adam Boland, and that has changed the complexion of this end. Great shot. Well, when, uh, when Greg Smith won his uh, first provincials, uh, he threw his broom, and rumors are it's still going because it, it was launched. I told the story yesterday in the broadcast booth that I played in that provincial, and uh, he was just lights out in that provincial. He was making everything. Uh, I was telling the story, if you recall, it had the stands out on ice six here uh, in the curling club. It was a great atmosphere. There was all kinds of people out on the ice. We played on ice five in draw seven against Greg and had an absolute wild one, which featured uh, we got a five ender with no guards. Uh, we'd eventually lose to Greg 11 to 10, but he played he played some fantastic curling in that 2018. We got a run back here, Sporty. Trying to clear it up here. Promotes the blue back, spills it off. So not 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 a bad shot at all. Now they have left that blue rock, guarded, and shot rock. I think if you're Greg Smith right now, don't you have to put put another guard up there? Gotta put a guard up. At this point in the end, try to get them to burn a few more rocks, and uh, you've got a rock in position there for the steal point potentially. Steal or force, yeah. Your guard here is the shot. Wasn't a whole lot of time wasted. Greg Smith did ask that that blue rock go out of play, but it certainly never. And Sporty, just another update here now. The ladies' game is a bit quicker than ours. Uh, they've been uh, moving along. We've had a few more rocks in play. So Stacy Devereaux, after giving up a three and six, came back. Stacy Curtis, sorry, came back with a two in the seven end. So now Curtis takes the lead by one. So Team Strong is playing eight down one with in our ladies' final, which is streamed. If you want the link for that, although why would you want to leave me in Sporty? I mean, let's be honest, but no, the link for that is over on the NLCA social media accounts. So a nice shot there by Chris Ford, Jamie, to get that center guard there, uh, in good position. It's up uh, right in the, t the center line. It's in about the two position. Uh, you'll be happy to hear this. Uh, Forty is a Patriots fan like yourself, so... Uh, He's obviously got a good choice in football teams in your mind. Anyways, been a, been a rough couple of years for the Patriots, but uh, anytime you got Belichick at the helm, you're uh, you're always in a position where you can make the playoffs. I'm a Steelers fan, so we didn't quite make it to the uh, playoffs this year, but hopefully next year it's going to be uh, fun to go watch those uh, AFC and NFC championship games later to get later today. There's, uh, I think, they're going to be two stellar games. Explains a lot, your Steelers fans. Forty it explains a lot. Sam got a little tight on this one and and set it out a hair, uh, so it's got a bit of curling to do here as it comes in. Looks like it might be a touch heavy. Really would have liked to have kept that above the T line. Uh, so just a you know just a, a rock or two heavy there by Sam. So chance now for Team Smith to really capitalize here, Sporty, if they can uh, put one right in there where Greg Smith just tapped there. So that's what he's going to be asking here for Chris Ford. Just for the record, the Steelers do have six Super Bowls. That's uh, pretty impressive. So uh, it does explain a lot about me. Anyway, uh, that that rock, had, like you said, it slid to the back of the forefoot, Jamie. Uh, and, and that creates a nice little pocket for Chris Ford. If he can ever get it in that pocket, Jamie, 
This could be big trouble for Nathan Young. They're working it really hard here, Sporty. Uh, they came off it here now, so it looks like the line has the curl a bit. I think it's got a... Line will be fine if they got the weight. So it's all about getting this now, basically. top, Full top four, top button. Just want to get a pass there. That's a pretty, it's in a great spot there for, uh, I mean, Ford would probably like to have that a half rock, rock deeper, but that's in a great spot here now, and uh, Team Nathan Young are in a, a spot of bother here. Yeah, I think he would have liked to get that a bit deeper, but nonetheless, that's in a real good spot, and uh, this is going to be an interesting finish to this end uh, with the skip rocks. If I'm Nathan Young, I'm peeling something. I'm not sure what I'm peeling yet, but I know it's only the seventh end, but... Uh, you could, you might see a timeout here. So the coaches here, we've got uh, team, we've got Jeff Thomas coaching the uh, team Young, and I believe it's Leslie Ann Walsh, if I'm not mistaken, coaches Greg Smith. Uh, Leslie Ann coaches Greg yes. Smith, and uh, Jeff Thomas coaches uh, Nathan. That's what I said. Is there not going here? Um, Sorry, man. I'm trying to get and myself there, here. And I, there is. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I got a curl at five o'clock. So, someone's hungry. Oh, cranky. And we got a timeout here, so you'll see uh, Jeff Thomas come out on the ice. Jeff Thomas, as we know, has been a coach many teams. He recently at the Olympics with Team Braguzio getting the bronze medal. Yeah, Jamie, I don't know if you recall when we did the uh, Tankard final last year, I put it out there publicly, right? That Brad was looking for a second. Did he? He hadn't, he hadn't signed EJ. Did he call you? And, uh, did he call you? I, I put it out there. Did he call you? I put it out there. I, I thought there might be a chance. Did he call you? He didn't call you, did he? He didn't call me. No. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Sport. And you were texting back and forth with Jeff Thomas, who was in uh, That's right. at, at the Olympics at the time. They didn't call me either, by the way. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't giving me a lot of hope. So I did see him on the ice the other day. I was out practicing, and I said, listen, if it doesn't work out with EJ this year and they don't win the Briar, is there a chance? And again, he shot my dreams down. It's, uh, again, but, oh, uh, set realistic goals for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, lots of rocks in play here. Uh, Jamie in the seventh end. This is a, we're getting to the critical part of the game here. Uh, so what, what are you I, yeah. thinking, Jamie? If you're, if you're coaching this team and you're Jeff Thomas, what do you think they're talking about? What shot do you like? Well, I think you've got to make a play on that yellow rock. I don't think peeling the blue that's on the center line is going to get you much. So I think they're talking about running that yellow in onto the blue top 12. You clear those two out. That at least gives you options for either turn. And uh, you may get lucky in the middle and move some rocks around. So you hit this right. You could get rid of three rocks up there. And uh, you're probably going to leave that blue rock that's back four. But it, you're at least going to give your chance, uh, yourself a chance to score here, Sporty. Yeah, well, you know, you called it, Jamie. You said uh, if you're Nathan Young, you're hitting something. Uh, you're taking some guard, and that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, you're absolutely right. So Sam Follett on the second rock is going to throw some heat at that yellow, and it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, if he makes contact with a couple of those rocks with the yellow. Looks like a good throw from Sam. They're hitting it early for a line. Oh. Just maybe, I don't know if Sam was maybe a, a hair tight because they got him on it early and that maybe straightened it out on him, but uh, just just a little unlucky there from Team Young. So now back to Team Smith, Sporty. Where does Team Smith put it? You could arguably put it right back in the same spot. You could. The other thing that you could do, that, that uh, rock that Chris Ford delivered that's on the top of the forefoot, you could draw down and just tap that back to the button. Uh, and then you got a lot of pressure on, uh, on Nathan Young. But right now, Nathan doesn't have a heck of a lot if you throw up a guard where that yellow was again. So uh, that may be the shot. Greg is in a good position to steal here. James. Yeah, if, if I'm Greg, I'm looking at it that... That outturn tap on that blue that you mentioned, that's going to be there. There's there's no no real benefit of Greg to play that. There's a benefit, but there's a downside that if you just leave it a hair high, then you're leaving Nathan something. So this call here from Greg Smith, the fact that Nathan played that run back on his last one showed how dangerous that rock was. So I think it's a smart call here by Team Smith to put it back up. So uh, just got a text here, and obviously people are listening across the country from uh, our good friend and a guy that I played two national championships with, uh, 
a good guy around the club, all around, Mr. Mike Morrissey. And Mike's out in BC, and he sent me a text. He's got the, he's got the video feed on the big screen, and he's watching us live. And uh, he said he's getting prepared for the Eagles to take down the Niners, and uh, he's enjoying the broadcast. So, Mikey, uh, shout out to you and Deb out in BC. Uh, miss you around here, but uh, great hearing from you, and glad you're enjoying the broadcast. Yeah, I can't say I miss you, Mike, but uh, glad to hear from you. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Miss Miss Old Mikey around here. Oh, Mikey was a so, character for sure. So he was a beauty. Back to this. Beauty. So Greg Smith came a fair bit deeper than he would like to. Um, he kind of left now. The only thing, only bon- bonus with what uh, Greg Smith just done is, if Nathan tries to peel out, he's going to leave it there. But he's probably left Team Young a tap here. Uh, to get at least get up for shot rock, so that really just a little bit extra weight sporty, just curl that extra bit more and uh, kind of put the door back open for Team Young here. This has been a really interesting end. I mean, we're here in the seventh end and not complete, and over on the ladies final, they're almost done the eighth end. So uh, we are in for an exciting last couple of ends in this men's uh, 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador tankard final. Jamie, I'm not sure if you did mention it, but uh, looks like Stacy Dever or sorry, excuse me, Stacy Curtis did get two in the seventh end and now leads that game over Heather Strong in the ladies final at uh, a score of seven to six. I mentioned that when you were worried about your sub. Uh. Did you get your man's sub got eight. I know. Did you, I'm, did I'm playing my first club game qualifier at 5 o'clock, man. So, what kind uh, of sub did you get? Sporty, let's uh, hear it. What'd you get? It's It's got to be the turkey, right? With uh, Belt? With, with bacon? No no bacon, man. I'm watching the acid reflux during the game, I'm watching my figure, man. Yeah. I'm an elite physical yeah. specimen here, and i got to keep it right, let's, let's keep this factual. All right, so it looks like they're playing an intern tap here, Sporty, and uh, from Nathan, I think that's what they decided. Just try to maybe promote that yellow rock. The only got to move would probably a rock sporty to get shot rock. I think so, yeah, Jamie. The trick here, I guess, sporty is where you leave your shooter. So this is a big, big shot for Nathan Young. His first rock of the seventh end. Right now leading 4-3, and he does have the hammer. Looked like he said to me, sporty, it looked like he might have set it a hair, but... As it's hanging out there, now they're trying to make a curl. Now they're they're on and off this, Jamie. Now they're so trying to make it straight. Now they're making a curl. He's got great weight as it comes down. Taps it up. The key is to get the shooter off, wow. which he did. That's a great shot there by Nathan. That is a great shot. The only thing Greg may have the his blue on the outside. It's hard to tell from our angle if he can utilize that blue and pump out the yellow. Looks like he can. Sporty, it's just a matter of where his that blue he promotes is going to spin to. So, yeah, just with like I said, with Greg Smith's guard coming a little deep, it left the door open for Nathan to make that great shot there. Jamie, that was a prime example, though. That was a team shot. I mean, Nathan threw the right weight. Uh, Sam did a great job calling the line. He had the sweepers on and off. The sweepers were communicating. It just goes to show you how important that is at this level because... Where you place a rock can be the difference between uh, two or three points or one point. And, and now Greg is going to call a timeout, and they're going to have a discussion on this. Yep, now it's Team Smith's turn to call a timeout. So, Sporty, whichever team gets a timeout, they get control of the house. So you'll see Leslie Ann now in this end go up to the other end coming pitcher here. So, Jamie, while they're talking about this shot, maybe it's a good time to uh, mention the sponsors because the sponsors are an important part of uh, both of the successes of these teams and allow them to travel and, and play at such an elite level. So for Team Nathan Young, BDO, Mary Browns, Coleman's, Town of Torbay, Orthodontic Associates, Pike Group, Wedgwood, Ice Pad, uh, Hardline Curling, Service Master, and Dynasty Curling. Uh, for Team Smith, Harvey's Home Heating, Stu Sells Realty, Dildo Brewery, Newfoundland Styro, Asham, Fun and Fast, Citywide Taxi, Sensible Gear, Classics, 
Horizon Maritime, Chess's Fish and Chips, Merch Monkey, Hey Orca, Dairy Farmers of Newfoundland, and Ray Creative Agency. So they are well insulated, they're well heated, they're well liquored up, and they've got stuff for the munchies, among others. That is quite the collection. It is sponsors. quite the collection. That's Thank you they, to the sponsors there. Yeah, that's why they look like NASCAR drivers out there with the sponsorship. They've got a lot of sponsorship, but in all seriousness, I mean, that's an important part for these curlers to want to be able to complete, compete at an elite level. I know Greg and his team made the commitment this year. They've been away to a number of spiels. That all costs money, takes a lot of time, and having the support of those sponsors is very critical. Uh, to them being able to do that so to all the all the listeners out there and the businesses that are sponsoring uh, these elite curling teams thank you very much for your sponsorship so greg smith's definitely playing the tap it's just a matter of where he's tapping it is he tapping it straight back is he tapping it onto the yellow My wife just sent me a message about the ladies' game. She's obviously not watching what I'm doing, which isn't a surprise. And I don't blame her. Yeah. I can't say I'm overly shocked either. So. <laughs> sure, your wife probably doesn't even know you're here. Yeah, oh, she just like brought she... me a sub. Right, right. <laughs> so they have made a decision here uh, for uh, Greg's last rock of the seventh end. Uh, They're going to tap? I think they are going to play a little tap. Uh, Jamie, and just tap that up to the button. I think the idea is... Maybe rub just, off that yellow. I think if you just tap it straight back, Sporty, get shot rock. If you leave your shooter there, it's going to be tough for Nathan to get it out. So it's just all a, a matter of where he taps it. But he's a little tight by the look of it right now, Sporty. And this is a big, big shot for this game. Uh, they're really working this hard. So you want to tap it right on the nose? Ford is working it. Oh, no. Looks pretty close, Jamie. So he taps it back. He don't want to be too heavy. Wow. So I think he got shot rock. It's tough to say. We'll see if someone gives an indication. Sam's not giving us anything. I don't think they know yet. So regardless, I guess there might only be one shot here for Nathan and maybe that um, outturn draw or there's an in off that blue as well that he's looking at out wide. That's just tapping on here now. We are on the uh, upper level of the St. John's Curling Club here, and the play is at the other end of the sheet right now. So we're seeing exactly what you're seeing on the monitor. It is really hard to tell from our position exactly who is shot. It looked to me like, Jamie, the blue is shot just from the angle on the, uh, on the feed there, but I could be wrong. They're looking at all kinds of possibilities, and I think... Have they decided to play this in off? Yeah, I think that's the only shot they got sporty. There's not quite enough curl there uh, because that blue one that's top eight. So they're going to play this hit and roll in. There's no real danger. So I guess it doesn't really matter at this point if there's a if yellow or blue shot. Don't really have anything else. The only other thing Nathan could play is that same intern he he just threw to maybe move it an inch. So. Jamie, when I see a shot like this, I'm reminded of the shot that Jennifer Jones made in 2005 in the Mile One Center to win the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, and I think you were the mascot. I was literally in the Scotties Little Softy outfit watching that shot. I'm glad I didn't have to see that. So, and here comes the rock from Nathan Young. This is a big shot. Sam stood up already, so I don't think he's close. So, so he didn't make the shot that they called. That was a real tough shot to get the in off out yeah. that deep. Someone they are moving the rocks away. I think they're going to put a stick on this, uh, Jamie. Yeah, if they're at all close, I mean, you know, with Harold and crew here with the ice insulation, I'm sure the, the pin is right where it's supposed to be. But anything close, you want to put a stick on it just to make sure. It's a real big point, Jamie. We're either tied going into the uh, eighth end or it's going to be a two-point lead for Nathan Young. So the time will tell here. They're taking a real hard look at this, Jamie. What do you think, sporty blue or yellow? I did say blue earlier, so I'm going to stick to that. And I'm usually wrong. 
Looks like it's blue. Yeah, so if typically they leave the, the rock that's the, the counter in the house and the, the one that's not the counter gets pushed out fir first. So uh, we'll await, yeah, I see the high five. So we're going to guess that that is a one-point steal for Greg Smith. So after seven ends in this men's Newfoundland and Labrador provincial final for the tankers, we are tied 4-4 going into the eighth end. We'll be back in a minute with eighth end action. Welcome back to the 2023 Newfoundland Labrador Men's uh, Provincial Final. Uh, it's the Tankard, the Provincial Curling Championships. The winner of this game today will represent Newfoundland and wear the red and white at the Tim Hortons Briar in London, Ontario in March. They will, Sporty. What a, uh, what a bit of a turn of events here. A uh, big steal uh, in the seventh end here when Team Greg Smith levels the game up. Now, with that said, you know, Team Nathan Young, they still have the hammer here playing eight, so they still have the advantage, but uh, great shot to uh, get a single here deuce by Team Young. So, Jamie, I don't know the exact stat, but I think there's a stat out there that when you're tied going into the eighth end, if you score an eight, you win like 80% of the game. So this is a, this is a huge end uh, that may help determine the outcome of this game. And uh, Jill Follett is over there with bated breath on every shot and uh, was nervous to hear that stat. So... Uh, Hopefully it goes the right way for her in this eighth end. You sound like West Mantooth from Anchorman. 40% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> You're made up stats, Sporty. Do your research. All right, we've got to come around here now by Zach Young. Yeah, so Zach put up the center guard. Uh, Nathan's lead, Ben Stringer, came right in with a nice shot to the top of the forefoot. And now Zach is trying to freeze to that. He just bounces a little, but still has a bit of still. corner freeze action a little bit on it. And uh, Sporty, just at the corner of the uh, screen here, you can see uh, Heather Strong's got a draw for two. She's just got to get a piece of the forefoot. As you see it coming into play here now, the sweepers are just cleaning. And Team Strong gets a deuce there, Sporty. So they take the lead back from Team Curtis. Team Strong now leads one point with two ends remaining in the ladies' final. And I uh, broadcast the Heather Strong game earlier in the week. And uh, for those of you who don't know the name Heather Strong, I'm sure most of you do, she has 12 provincial titles. She hasn't won one since 2015, took a few years away from the game, but she's right in the mix over there on ice four, looking for championship number 13. And, and to get to the 2023 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts in Kamloops. That's right, Sporty and our ice stringer with a really nice tap and roll in there. Great shot. Another good team shot there by Young, which now results in Team Smith having to play this run back, Sporty. Yeah, they are running back their own blue, trying to run it back into the yellow. Zach is really working this hard. They're so just not going to get the shot. The rock rolls over. It's still in play. It's only covering the very outer part of the 12 foot. Uh, and now Nathan is going to... Uh, looks like throw... Is he going to throw the guard? He's going to throw a guard here. He's got hammer, so... You've got two rocks in the house there, so that's what he's leaning towards. Someone's loudly eating a bag of chips behind me, and I'm hungry. 
I do have that sub there waiting for me, Jamie, so keep your hands off that. Yeah, the second half of this Tankard final brought to you by Subway or Mr. Sub or anyone, but can you just co-eat that sub? <laughs> I'm working here, man. I'm working. So nice, uh, nice guard by uh, Nathan Locke. As I said before, Nathan uh, likes the outdoors. I think he's got a quad and, uh, as I said, spends some time uh, in the outdoors. And nice, nice draw there for him uh, to put up that center guard in the two position right on the center line. So it looks like Bowen's a little tight again here. They're trying to hold it straight. So run it back, got a little unfortunate there. He managed to run it back on the other yellow, but jammed on his blue. So uh, for Team Smith, that's a tough break and a real advantage here for Team Young to put another one behind this guard buried to lie three, Sporty. Yeah, it is an opportunity right now for uh, Team Young to lie three. I, I kind of had to think about the scoreboard because uh, Nathan's got the hammer and his throwing center guards and Greg is uh, hitting center guards and doesn't have the hammer. So just uh, trying to figure that out, but Nathan does, in fact, have the hammer, and now he is going to try and make this draw to lie three. So, Sporty just got some, uh, as this rock comes to play here, looks like it's going to be a good shot by Team Nathan Young. We've got some stats here. So, after seven ends, Team Greg Smith are curling 73%. Team Nathan Young curling 82%, so slight advantage there. And uh, pretty much every position except uh, the second positions, the teams are pretty close in positions by, so... That's why we see a tie game on the scoreboard. Yeah, both of these teams, uh, Jamie, they've curled exceptionally all week. Uh, did the Greg Smith tiebreaker yesterday against Simmons, and that was a super curled game. Uh, Greg Smith and his team made a lot of rocks, so these are both really quality teams. Got some heat coming here again, Sporty, and unfortunately just ran it through the hole there. Jamie, this is getting a little uncomfortable for Greg Smith. Uh, Nathan Young is lying three, and now he's going to put the guard up. But those two rocks are dead frozen uh, on the button in the top of the forefoot. So this is developing into a real uh, opportunity for Team Nathan Young. Yeah, no question, Sporty. So just trying to put this rock back now, and you'll, you'll see Team Smith again, I'm sure, run it back in. But at least this time it's going to be... Uh, for Team Young, that is, is going to be their rock going back in on their rock. So this is the first rock of this eighth in from the third on the team, Nathan Young, Sam Follett. Sam was telling me uh, he was in uh, studying business and has uh, shifted gears and is now uh, working on his psychology degree. So uh, good shot there by Sam to get that guard up there and block off those two that are in the forefoot. And now Greg has some decisions to make. I believe he uh, lived in St. Louis for a while. Beautiful city. <laughs> Beautiful city, St. Louis. I, I think your opportunity to get elected there is uh, that ship has sailed. Yeah, certainly not winning any support with the home, home fans there of the St. Louis Blues. I know one other St. Louis Blues fan, Seamus O'Keefe. As I said, they did have a Stanley Cup a couple of years ago. So here is uh, Chris Ford now, and they are looking to run that guard that uh, Sam Fowler put there straight back and try to get those rocks on the four. It's going to be, be close, Sporty. He's close to the nose. So he managed to unlock the one that was top four, which is a great shot, but it just it will leave Team Young now, Sporty, the chance to play that in turn, come around again. Lock it was one a on great top. shot, and you saw Greg working on that yellow one that was uh, just trickling out of the house. He, he didn't want that to hang around because that's another one that uh, could be facing three or four on his last rock, so he made sure he got that out of the house. But again, Nathan Young has an opportunity to apply a lot of pressure on Greg Smith's team if Sam Follett can uh, get this draw back into the top eight foot. Looks like they're working a bit early here, Sporty. I can't tell if it's for line or if it's for weight, but they're certainly going on it. The line looks like it should be good, Sporty, if they got the weight, but I think the sweepers were going for weight here. You want to make sure you get it in as deep as you can get it. That's a good shot there by Young Lock. Young Lock. Sam Follett. Follett. Knew it wasn't saying it right. Thank you. This mom's not happy with me. She's in 
purse swinging distance of me. I'm a little nervous. So this is a big end, Jamie. It's the eighth end. Uh, as, I, as I said, tied four to four. And Greg is going back to throw his first rock. He's facing three. This is the fourth or fifth run back in a row, Sporty, I it think. Is. So a well-played end by Team Young. And it just goes to show the first few rocks at the end, if you don't get them you know, really where you want it, you know, the result is three or four run backs in a row. Greg has to make this shot. He has to get to some of those yellows moving. If he does not make this run back, he's going to be in a world of hurt on his last rock. So he has to make this curling shot. It's a little tight out of his hand, Sporty. They're on it and off it, though. He's really close. And he makes the run back, Sporty. Now, he left his rock open, so it, it does help Team Smith from the aspect of there's no longer two rocks buried behind a guard on center line. But it will give Nathan Young a chance to hit and lie three and then put the pressure back on Team Smith. Yeah, that was a great effort by Greg. Uh, just grazed that second yellow uh, as the rock went through the house, almost made the double. Uh, but again, Nathan Young has a chance to lie three and have Greg staring at three, uh, throwing his last rock. So we mentioned uh, Chris Ford had a, a third place finish in a national. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Team Nathan Young nearly captured a Canadian junior title. Uh, with a, I think they lost to Owen Purcell from Nova Scotia in the final. They'll be going back to the juniors this year and uh, definitely one of the favorites in the field to try and capture that title and bring it home to the Rock. And I believe, I believe Owen Purcell actually in the men's tankard is in the final. They've got a modified triple up there. I believe he won the A division. Uh, so I, I think he will be in the final there to go to a briar not long after just winning a bronze actually at the World Juniors a couple weeks ago, last week. So they're trying to roll away, originally was the call. Even right on the nose is pretty good. That is a nice shot. I think Greg, he has to go after that and he's gonna to try to, I think maybe, or is he gonna play the, is he playing the draw, Jamie, or is he playing the hit and roll in behind all that? I think he is playing the hit and roll. Try to roll in behind all of that. If you throw, uh, if he throws one of his shoulder height backswing big weight shots, you may be able to hit that, so the rock on the right, the number two rock sporty, um, kind of almost right in the crotch, but just the one on the right first, and you may get it to spin up uh, a little bit and shoot to the left, So, but he needs to hit the rock on the right first. I think Greg had a shot that uh, spun up, and it was on the uh, TSN 1v1 for a number of uh, nights. He needs to make one like that right now. He needs a big one. To get his team, uh, keep his team in this curling game. They're trying to get it to curl. Just hit the wrong rock first. He really needed to hit the rock on the right first, so just overcurled a little now, and it's going to give uh, Team Nathan Young Sporty a uh, big shot here for three points. Wow, that's a big development in this game. Uh, you know, I talked about at this level, when you have the hammer, you're trying to get two. Nathan Young is going to make his way back to the hack now for his last rock of this eighth end, and he is going to have a draw for three, and this is really going to change the complexion of this game. So I believe Sporty he can come to his yellow rock. Looks like, yeah, he can be able to come to his yellow rock. So basically needs to uh, just do what he's done all game. He's had his draw weight. Yeah, and I expect he's telling, uh, he's telling Benny Stringer and uh, Nate Locke, do not pick your broom up. Keep dusting it. Keep it Keep down. Keep it clean. You can see them all clean in the ice. This is a big point to, get, yeah, to capture a three-point lead with only two wins to go in this tankard final. Jamie, you mentioned Owen Purcell. Uh, I think there's a Newfoundland connection on this team. Joel Kretz. All right, come, yeah, we'll get that second. So right now, just a draw for three. Pretty much just needs to be anywhere in that paint. So you'll see the guys will heavy clean this now as it comes into the house. It's a big three inner there for Team Young. That is a huge shot for this game. Uh, three ender from team Nathan Young. Uh, and so after eight ends of play in this 2023 Newfoundland Labrador Tankard final, it's team Nathan Young seven, 
Team Greg Smith. Four will be back with the ninth and then a second. Welcome back. Uh, we're in the ninth end of this 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador Tanker Final. We're broadcasting live from the city of legends, St. John's, Newfoundland. And uh, we are live here at the Remax Center, the St. John's Curling Club. Our feature game is on Ice 3. It is the provincial final. And after a big three-ender, Nathan Young now leads Greg Smith 7-4 to four as we play the ninth. Steve Bragg uh, in the booth here alongside Olympic gold medalist Jamie Korab. Jamie, that was a big turn of events for this game. Yeah, no question. I mean, any three under in any game is big, but certainly a, when you're tied in the eighth inning, and get a three under to put yourself up three points. Now, with that said, Greg Smith was down three points after four, got a deuce, got a steal. So they've already done with this this game. Key here now for Team Smith, they want to get rocks in play. They need to get their deuce. Team Young, they're going to try to do the opposite, try to keep rocks in the house, try to keep it as clean as possible. Well, except for Team Smith now, getting a deuce here is going to be key for them. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. You just got to take it one step at a time, get your deuce, and then focus on the steal in 10, and then you're you're trying to steal in 11. But you can't do that uh, in 10 and 11 until you get the deuce first in 9. So they're going to do everything that they can to get the deuce in 9, and Nathan's going to do everything that he can to prevent that. And Sporty, just in the last end there, in the last drive, was going to be, you mentioned you had Joel Kratz, Kroon with own personal, so... Uh... Yeah, Kratzy, uh, Joel Kratz, great curler here out of Newfoundland, uh, playing with Owen Purcell, won that Canadian Junior Championship. And uh, if you'll recall, Joel Kratz played with uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood and Dan Bruce in the 2020 Canadian Junior up in BC, where they came within a whisker of winning that Canadian right. Championship. Uh, they were actually playing in that while we were all trying to dig out of snow here in Snowmageddon. And as legend has it, they got out the day before, I believe, the, the storm hit and went on to almost win the Canadian Championship. So with that stringer on his great first rock, second rock just a little bit heavy, and you've seen that one went back 12. And then uh, I like this here, Team Smith opted to go for the double guard on the same side. And now you'll see Locke come down and likely put one really tight, if not top 12, top 8 in the house. So for those of you at home, you're probably wondering with Nathan up three why he's not going over and ripping one of those corner guards or trying to get both of them. He can't because uh, we're playing the three guard zone. So uh, he has opted to play the three guard and Nathan Locke has in executed a really nice shot. And uh, the one thing about the free guard zone, when you find yourself in a position like this, JB, where you're down three, it affords you the ability to get some rocks in play and maybe try and generate that deuce. Yeah, no question. So you got those two corner guards up there, and now with Nathan throwing that guard on his last rock there, uh, gives Smith a chance now to play a little tap through the hole. Um, that's really got to curl sporty just with how uh, how far that is out. Just looks like it's starting to come over now. We're going for a line. They're really going to have to work this hard, Jamie, to get it by the guard, I think. I don't know if that might have hit a flat spot or something, Sporty. The weight seemed to come out of it and uh, curled more than rocks have all game. But regardless, uh, it still stayed up as a guard. It moved that other one around, so it's still not a bad shot from Bowling. Yeah, the bad news is he didn't make the shot. The good news is there's another guard in play. 
and Roxon play right now are Greg Smith's friends. You know, we talked about the free guard zone, and I think we mentioned Randy Furby earlier in the telecast. Uh, I think it was a result, if I'm not mistaken, of a Randy Furby when he was playing with Pat Ryan, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And they were in the final, or and it was broadcast on TV of the Briar, and they scored, I believe, two points in the first end and then just peeled for nine ends straight. And at one point, the fans in the building were chanting, boring, boring. And uh, I think from that point forward, the Canadian Curling Association recognized they needed to, to do something to make the game more TV friendly. And I think the free guard zone has definitely accomplished that. Yeah, no question. I, th I think if uh, you know you ask around, the first time it was tried was at a Spiel in Moncton, the Moncton 500 or Moncton 2000. It was long before my time, but uh, they did kind of experiment with it there. And like I said, it was brought in in the mid nineties was the first to three rock rule and the four and now we're up to the five rock rule. So uh, it's definitely generated more offense. So let's see, Sporty, back to our sheet here. Uh, Nathan's asked to play a, I believe just like a, a peel or hit and, is he just trying to hit and roll away here? Yeah, I think he was it over. I think he would have liked the, uh, to peel it out completely and roll off. That set up a bit of a staggered guard over there, which uh, Greg might be able to utilize later in the end. Looked like they might have been playing just a hit and roll to the center, but uh, kind of more on uh, your wave there to just pe rip that right out of there. Don't leave it around there, yeah. As I said, at this point, you know, Greg needs rocks in play. So uh, any rocks that are in play are not really uh, a good thing for Nathan Young. He wants to keep it as clean as possible. So it's got a bit of curl in it who's sporty now. They're going to try to carve that over. You see Zach Young there on the right, fun and fast, sweeping that over. So good shot by Adam. He has gotten that pretty buried behind the corner guard. It did slip behind the T-line, but I guess from his perspective, that makes room for a little more behind that corner guard. And now we're going to see Nathan go chase that and maybe try and freeze it, it looked like, from his call. Now he is thinking about maybe taking one of those corner guards. Yeah, I mean, you rip the corner, um, you know. I believe that's... I think that's from that ice calling. now, Jamie, he's, he's trying to peel of he's, some he's, sort. He's peeling it, and he said, if your shooter can come over on the side of our yellow, that, you know, from this, from your angle at home, it's the rocks on the left. I assure you, he does not like those staggered rocks over there. No, and, uh, you know, this is a good shot here. You, you peel those, you try to move those around on the other side. We'll see here now. He's made good contact. Wow, that's a real nice shot by uh, Sam Follett. He... He got rid of the corner guard, and he got rid of that stagger. He literally couldn't do any better there. It's a great shot from Sam. The only thing I think, yeah, Greg is going to avoid, or he, he's not going to uh, look at those two yellow rocks, and he's going to come in and draw another one in there and try to utilize that corner guard as best as possible to get his deuce. Yeah, there's no question that come around there, Sporty, is the, the shot. Those yellow rocks are set up for a double later if you want, and you know, you'll probably see Nathan either rip the top or rip that back one. But certainly, set up could, could quite very well be a deuce here for Team Smith if they can get the rocks into positions. So, Chris Ford's going to attempt to uh, draw behind that corner and uh, get something set up for Greg Smith. Uh, Chris is a technician with Valet, he commutes back and forth to uh, Long Harbor for. Uh, for his work uh, when he's away from the curling club. And this rock looks pretty good, Jamie. He's Just got, papered the guard. It's a good line, but the, when anytime your sweepers don't, they stop walking, uh, you're not light. So uh, he wants to stick around and not, uh, not get too deep. So it went a lot deeper than he would have liked, but you know what? He's in there for what looks to be fourth shot right now. But uh, I don't think Greg Smith will be too worried. You do have a, a rock in there. You do have a chance to get a deuce here. Yeah, he would have liked that higher up in the stop in the top eight there, covering that rock in the back eight. Even, even uh, yeah, top eight would have been really nice, but just went a little too deep. So Nathan Young has asked uh, his third, Sam Follett, to come down and remove uh, the blue rock that's in the eight foot. So they're trying to make a curl now with the sweeper here carving it over. 
Yeah. I'd like to stick around to live one, two, and three. Greg is going to work that hard and try to bring that blue one into play. So now Greg Smith has, he got two options here. You could play the double now and lie two, or you could kind of draw one around here now, lie three. So given that it's still third rocks, I like this call from Greg. So big development over in our ladies final. Team Curtis scores four in the ninth end to take a massive three-point lead with one end remaining. So Team Strong now will have Hammer and need to score three points to tie it up. Wow, Heather had the three-ender back in the sixth end, and then Stacy comes back uh, later in the game. The ninth end, he gets that four-ender. That's a big turn of events in that game. So, Jamie, the, uh, Greg came out to this rock. The weight looks pretty good. Zach is trying to carve it in there on the last couple of feet. Yeah, I'm never a fan of a skip coming out to help sweep. One, because they're not good sweepers. And two, the, the, the scientific proof is out there that the second sweeper don't do a whole lot. The third sweeper basically does nothing. So you're, unless you have a player that's injured, like Jeff Walker was one year at the Briar, where you know Brad used to come out and help out, um, you're better off staying in there, keeping the line, and letting your sweepers uh, do the work. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I was going to say that the, the research does tell you that that third sweeper doesn't really uh, add much to the rock, so it's better off to stay in the house and call the line and leave it to your two sweepers to, to bring it in. So he might have left a slash double here. Now I think that's what they're going to play. It looks like you just need to hit a little less than half a rock. I know a couple times when I went out to try and help sweep when I was playing third uh, there with Noseworthy and playing with Turpin and Steve Rutledge, uh, I was like, expecting a, almost a cross check from Randy Turpin uh, to get me out of the way. So the rock's away here by Nathan. He's not overthrowing it. Nice control. So they're they're going early out of the hand here, Sporty. They are going really hard. It he seems is, like it's pretty tight on that guard. It's really tight. So now we're into Greg's first rock. He has an opportunity here, Sporty. He could make this double in lie three. Wow. That, uh, I, I don't know. I think uh, Nathan may just have got that, that one going a little bit. Uh, but you're right. Greg Smith now has an opportunity to just hit it a hair high and uh, lie three. Yeah. And have Nathan facing three on his last rock. So he'll have the same shot, naturally. Um, with the guard gun, you can throw a little more weight. So, But, yeah, if uh, Greg makes a good shot here, he's going to lie three and put the pressure back on Nathan to try to make a double to limit the damage to only two. One thing you do have to say about Greg Smith, I mean, I, that was a heck of a day those guys put in yesterday to, to win that game drawn to the button. And then a tiebreaker in 11 ends, and then to come out and beat uh, Lammy last night in 31 ends. And curling. There's, there's no quit in this team, and now they have an opportunity to score, or sorry, to lie three and put a lot of pressure on Nathan Young on his last drive. So it's coming down. They need to hit it just a hair high. And is he going to move an up? Great shot by Greg Smith to lie three. You know what, uh, Jamie? They almost left that too long because they just grazed that back one and just got it enough. Uh, I think Greg would have liked to hit a little higher and, and roll roll his shooter over because uh, those rocks are pretty close together now and it seems like it's a fairly automatic double and is there even is there a triple there's you, there's a possibility for a triple you'd have to throw pretty hard the other thing now is there's three yellow catchers back there sporty so uh, you know team young wants to make this double but you gotta kind of they gotta be careful there's gonna be a lot of weight coming so the chance of sticking one of those blues on the back yellows are slim, but uh, you still have to be mindful of it nonetheless. But I think we're going to see some weight coming here, Sporty. That's a great point. You see Sam kind of walking or sliding around the rock there trying to figure out all the angles with those three yellow uh, rocks in the back of the 12-foot. Here we go, Sporty. Big shot in the ninth end by Nathan Young. Last rock in nine. If Nathan Young can make a, a big shot here, this might be one that takes him to uh, London, Ontario. So he's close. So he makes the double, jams it over there, and his shooter just rolls off. So 
Mission accomplished for Team Young. They limited damage to two. And also mission accomplished for Team Smith. Their goal in this end was to score a deuce. And they've got an open draw to the eight foot to get that deuce. You said it right from the beginning of the end, Jamie, that uh, Greg Smith's number one focus in the ninth end was to get the deuce. And now he goes back to the hack and has a draw to full eight foot to get the deuce. And it's going to make for a real interest, interesting tenth end if he can make this curling shot. So this is the final rock of the ninth end. We're late in this game, uh, the 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador men's tankers, uh, the provincial curling uh, finals. And Greg Smith has a draw here for two to get within uh, one point of Nathan Young. Looks like he's got it sporty. The sweepers put their hands up, put the brooms up. So that's two points there, sporty. Now we've got Team Young up one with playing the 10th and final end. We'll be back in uh, a minute to bring you uh, the action in the 10th end. We'll So welcome back, curling friend. If, if curling fans were in the tenth end of this 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador men's tankard, it's the provincial final, and we have defending champion Nathan Young, who leads this game by one point, up seven to six on Team Greg Smith. This is a rematch of the 2022 tankard final. It's going to be an exciting uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the Remax Center, the St. John's Cronin Club. Steve Sporty Bragg, along here with Olympic gold medalist, Mr. Jamie Korak. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so the start of this 10th end here now, I think, you know, if you're these curlers to start the end in, in that break, you want to take a few deep breaths and, uh, you know, just focus on one shot at a time. Try not to get too high, keep even keel. And uh, for Nathan Young, they're going to look to keep as clean as they can. And for uh, Team Smith, naturally, Sporty, they're going to want to get some rocks in play and, uh, you know, hopefully be in a, they're a good shot position buried, or if not, have uh, Team Young thrown out a couple rocks on his last one. Absolutely. So Zach Young threw up the center guard on his first rock. Uh, Nathan came in there from his lead, uh, Ben Stringer, uh, put it in uh, half in the forefoot behind that guard. I expect Greg is going to put another center guard up there. At this point, you're all in. You gotta find a way to get the steal. You gotta get the center clogged up. And he is in fact looking to get one perhaps just over the hog line in what we call a one position. Yes, uh, Zach on his first one would have liked to have been either really tight or really short. And it uh, looks like unfortunately for Team Smith that uh, they both end up pretty close to the same and you know it's gonna make for an easy peel. So I think you're gonna see Team Greg Smith look to guard those two they just threw. And Sporty, just while we're here the uh, on the percentages, one of the things that uh, Curling Canada likes to do is uh, if you outcurl your opponent, your opposing player, by five points, you get a plus. So after nine ends, uh, Zach Young has uh, got the advantage over Ben. Uh, second position here, Nathan Locke has the advantage over Boland. In the third position, we have uh, pretty well a tie. And in the skip position, we pretty much have the same thing. So really close in the back end, and the other end's flip-flop. We've got a rock coming in, Sporty, here by Stringer. Yeah, he's... Uh played a really nice shot frozen solid to uh, his first uh, first rocks of two really well positioned rocks by uh, Ben Stringer and I just look at those percentages and if I see correctly Nathan Locke is at 96 percent for this game so uh, the second on the, on the Nathan Young team is having quite the game 
uh, as we're, we're into the 10th end. Uh, so 90, for those of you at home, 96%, he's hardly missed anything or just a one and a half shot there. So great game by uh, Nathan Locke. I think he missed an out turn in the fifth or sixth, fourth end coming home. He was a little wide. And other than that, he hasn't missed a shot. So, Jamie, they're talking about uh, Greg and, and team about what to do here. Uh, the concern is where Zach's second rock came, that's a pretty easy double. It's a pretty easy double peel. I could probably even make that one. Uh, uh, again, just hit it on the high side let's, and let's all three rocks are going. Steal in fact, Sporty. <laughs> so they're, they're talking about moving these around, and, you know, if it was me here now, I'd be tempted just to throw a one. Uh, you're going to be throwing your – you're going to – Group these rocks, regardless of the, this thrown rock now, it's going to be pretty close to that rock that they're going to make contact with initially. Um, so I, I think you're giving Nathan Young a, a chance at a fairly easy double regardless. But I could be wrong. Yeah, you could throw the one, absolutely, Jamie. I think they've opted to come down and oh, they're gonna move, move, move these rocks yeah. around, try, try to change the angles, keep three guards out there now maybe, uh, but just make it a little more of a difficult shot. Uh Got a lot, of, a lot of weight to those forty field. here on this, so you know. So I don't think that quite accomplished what they wanted because it took one of the rocks off the center line, and the two rocks that remain on the center line, it's not an overly difficult double. No, they're almost left with the same shot here, and now instead of having a, a guard on center line, you've got a guard, you know, off to the wing. So, you know, Team Smith are going to need a break here if they're going to put some pressure on Team Young for their last rock of the end. And when you're curling 96%, uh, that's uh, the reason why he's curling 96%. He made that look pretty easy. Hasn't missed and, much. Uh, he's, he's opened up uh, the, uh, the front of the house on the center line. And now Greg is going to go up there and he's going to put a guard up there. And he needs something to try and hide behind for his uh, skip rocks. He has to steal his end or uh, this 2023 uh, Newfoundland Labrador tanker is over. So it looks like he's going to throw a guard off center, which I like. The tendency for a lot of teams here sporty is you'd still just throw a guard on center line. But, you know, I like this here. Gets it off center line. It's a bit, it's a, if you're going to throw a peel, the easiest peel to throw something right down center. So takes it off center line and, you know, it, changes basically you only give team young really one turn to play you almost got to play outside inside out because you don't want to run that back on the yellows which they have to do here so good call by team smith at some point jamie i think he's gonna have to do something with those two yellow rocks because i'm not sure what you hide behind if he came to his last rock. Those, those two rocks are, are dead frozen. I don't think if you, if you draw behind those, it's an easy run back. So he's... You'll see on uh, likely the... Probably won't be Greg's first. It'll probably be the third's second rock. Uh, you'll probably see him play a little tap back. Try to tap that yellow rock back, just back button. Leave your, your rock right on top of theirs frozen. So we are down to the third rocks in this 10th end of uh, the men's 2023 provincial final. The winner of this game is going to go to the Tim Hortons prior in March and represent Newfoundland uh, in London, Ontario. The weight looks to be pretty good on this, Jamie. I think uh, it's probably going to go in the one position, another high guard, and Nathan's going to go up there right away and rip that guard. Yeah, no, no hesitation there from Nathan's. Pretty simple at this point. Get rid of the guards. Leave yourself as simple a shot as you can in 10. And you can see Sam Follett in the hack really, really focusing, really setting himself up here now. He's got two, two rocks to play in, in this 10th end, and probably both are going to be peels. So they're, they're on it the whole way here, Sporty. Needs to roll it off. They're going to be just off nose. Their lock works it over Nathan and gives him the thumbs up. Good shot. That's the beauty about throwing that big weight. Uh, so precise. Even if you chunk a fair bit of the rock, you're still going to get some action from the shooter. So, 
and it's game over. Team Curtis is your ladies 2023 Provincial Scotties champs. Yeah, Jamie, uh, Stacy, uh, Stacy Curtis and team had a great week here. Uh, they played extremely well. Um, I think for Stacy, Julie, and Erica, they've uh, they've been at the Scotties a few times. But uh, what a great uh, what a great story for Camille Burt. She will play in our first Scotties tournament of hearts, and you can see the emotion. Yeah, you can see what it means, you know, to the ladies out there, you know, first time getting back for a few years for Stacy. There's already some tears, rightfully so, coming down. I tell you, I remember as a young curler, Jamie, and I think it was 1997. Uh, I can't remember who the skip was, but Ken Ellis played in his first tanker, or, or played in his first briar. They won the tanker here in the St. John's Curling Club. And Ken was a tower of a man, probably about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and he walked in the door and just burst into complete tears going to his first briar. And it was a pretty cool moment for me to see and to, to see that emotion from Camille Burt. That's uh, awesome stuff, so congratulations to her. Yeah, it's talent for Kenny because once he got into a full slotting position, he only had about three feet till he was at the hog. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jamie, we were watching the other ice. Uh, I think what they've decided is they're going to try to play the hit on this yellow and stay dead frozen to it. I think is what the what the call is. They've only got uh, three rocks left. Uh, you can't leave those two rocks frozen too much longer. You're not really able to hide behind them. I, so I think that is the call. A little, uh, little tight. A little bit tight, a little soft, and the weight was a little down, so they're really working to keep this straight here, Sporty. So I don't they are working it really, really, really hard. So I think they're calling the audible here now. They tried to nose it, and a smart, smart call by Smith here to let it curl up and get behind that guard. And Now you'll see Nathan Young looks like going to play this run back or just peel it out. If I'm Nathan Young here, I think I'm just straight peeling and I'm trying to get cute, but we'll see what he does. That was an interesting result to roll behind the, the uh, corner guard there now, because there is a good possibility that Nathan Young is going to face two rocks when he goes to throw his last rock. So this is going to get really interesting. So it looks like he is playing the run, which comes with some danger sporting. It does, but uh, when you want someone playing the shots like this, Sam Follett throws this weight so good. And they're on and off it as it comes it's down. It's really close. Wow, what a great shot by Sam Follett. He gets rid of the guard. He takes the rock out of the house. And now Greg is down the two rocks and has to try to find somewhere to hide his rock to get a steal here. And you can see the guys were pretty pumped up about that one. Uh, Jamie, you know, we don't know how this is going to end. We're down to skip rocks. But I think, you know, you have to look at this Nathan Young team. And they're on the verge of a uh, defending a, bra or a tankard title. They're on the verge of it. Commentator's and curse here, Sporty. Could be the commentator's Pump curse. I hope break, not. Sporty. I hope not. But... Uh, again, they, they, again, the, she's in sw purse swinging distance of me. Sporty. But they won that uh, tankard last year. I think one of the youngest champions, uh, an amazing feat. And now uh, they're a couple of rocks away from trying to secure their second tankard title. So it looks like Smith here now is going to try to uh, come in and one going to try to get behind that guard there. You really need to get a rock hidden here. So. Weight looks pretty good, Sporty. The sweepers are on and off it. Just a heavy clean here. Yeah, Greg is trying to get in between, pretty much split the uprights there and get in between that hole and get in behind that uh, guard that's uh, pretty tight to the rings. So it's coming in here, Sporty, and that's a pretty good shot. Pretty sure by Greg, like I said, it was a great shot there by by Follett, but you know, you, with playing that run back, you were bound to leave a guard up there, which he did, and. That's what Smith is using now to try to get buried in there, which he did. Yeah, that was a great shot by Greg Smith. I was going to say this might be an opportune time to use a timeout and get to 
and the experience of Jeff Thomas out here to, to, to give them some options in terms of the best choice for the shot. And knowing Jeff here, Jeff's going to come out and talk about this shot, and he's going to talk about if you make this shot, he's likely going to talk about what's Greg going to do next, and so then you know what you want for your last. So, you know, Jeff's goal is to come out here now to get him to focus on this shot, but also to have him prepared for what, could, what, what ifs. So what are you thinking? What do you think Jeff Thomas is telling uh, Nathan Young and team uh, during this time out? I think if Jeff is coming out here now, he's, you know, first and foremost, Jeff's a pretty calming influence guy, so he's going to tell him they're in great shape. Um, you know, in terms of what shot he's going to tell him to call, I mean, you could rip the yellow, um, which is a good call. You could do the same thing Greg just did, but there's a lot of danger in that, so... I think you might you likely see Greg or Greg, sorry, uh, Jeff tell him just to rip that yellow one out of there or run it back. As long as you don't hit it on the inside, mission accomplished. Yeah, if you completely rip the yellow, uh, Greg would have an opportunity to lie too, potentially, or he could throw another guard up on that. Um, if you run this back and make it, I mean, obviously, Greg's only got one rock left, and he's going to have to put it in a good spot just to make Nathan throw his last rock. So. I think from that ice, they're running this straight back, Jamie. Looks like they're running it back. Again, again if, you're, if there's going to be a pro side miss, you're going to hit it just on the outside. So Nathan is thinking back now to all the practice that he's done this year. I mean, these guys are down here throwing rocks all the time. He's going to get set, get focused, and... Uh, try and make this shot a straight back raise to eliminate the so, this shot that Greg Smith just threw. Rocks away, looked like he was pretty close. To the broom, nice good release. Just trying to make a curl a hair at the end. Yo, he's punched and it through the hole. Feel the way, that's, uh, yeah, that's still, uh, still not a bad shot from from Nathan. You know, he run back was the, the shot you wanted to make, but that's the pro side miss. He cleared so the guard away. Greg Smith did not waste any time. He went up and uh, he's going to play the hit on that rock. He obviously wants to keep this in the house and have Nathan facing two on his last rock. If he knows is this, uh, Jamie, that uh, that back rock is going to be wide open and Nathan might just play the hit on that for the win. Yeah, you're you're hit. You're going to hit or you're going to draw. You're you're hit. Obviously, if you just make contact, you're at least going to force an extra. Um, so it all depends on what his comfort level is. We're in the 10th end. You know, the ice doesn't seem like it's slowing down at all. So it'll be whatever is most comfortable for Nathan, whether he, if this shot is made, whether he wants to play the nose for the winner or draw. They've uh, had pretty good control of their hits. Uh, I really don't see Nathan drawn against two in the 10th. Uh, he could lose the game. Uh, so I think he would be hitting. But we'll find out shortly. Greg wouldn't mind rolling this just a shade, maybe cover that back one. They're really working it hard. Right on the nose is the call, yep, yeah, which is what she made. So So Nathan right away, uh, absolutely, he is going to play the hit. Yeah, I mean, they, like I said, they throw that, that quiet board weight really well. They've thrown rocks here this game. And uh, again, if, as long as you, if you make contact, which you know, you're playing for the nose 40, but uh, big shot here for Nathan Young, a chance to go to the Briar in London, Ontario, represent Team NL, wear that red and white. So folks, we are broadcasting upstairs here, and uh, there are a lot of people up here, and you can, you can almost hear a pin drop. It's, uh, it's a nervous time, it's an exciting time, but Nathan Young, has an open hit to win his second Newfoundland and Labrador tanker to be a back-to-back -back champion. And the rock's out of his hands, Jamie. We got an indication that the weight's a little quiet. Right away, Benny Stringer is working it really hard. So they're, going, they're just saying clean here now. They're off and on. He's working it really hard, James. Like it looks like Sam Follett. Oh, and there it is! <laughs> Team Nathan Young, your 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador tankard. Congratulations. Jamie, I think we've just witnessed uh, some curling history here in Newfoundland.
This Nathan Young team has definitely made history back-to-back -back provincial champions. What a great performance yeah. by Nathan Young, Sam Follett, Nathan Locke, Ben Stringer, and Coach Jeff Thomas. Congratulations. You are the 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador Provincial Curling Championships. This Nathan Young team will travel to London, Ontario in March to represent Newfoundland at the Tim Hortons Prior. Well, Sporty, what a, what a five or six days of curling here on both the men's and women's side. Quality ice, quality curling. Before we sign off one more time, just wanted to thank the crew we have behind this. You know, Trevor, John, Kathy for organizing everything. Uh, they really upped their game. Uh, like I said, there'll be some commentary as well for the spiel. But I just want to thank everyone for putting this off. It's been fun to commentate. It's been easy. I just show up and get to speak. But a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So thank you for everyone that's done that. And Andrew as well, yeah. Yeah, Jamie, it's been an absolute pre uh, pleasure and an absolute privilege to be able to be in the broadcast booth and broadcast these games and to be part of this final. Uh, this is an historic moment. Uh, young Nathan Young, just a, a pile of young, probably 20 and 21 year olds have just won back to back provincial champions. It's really been a pleasure to be beside you in the booth, Jamie. On behalf of uh, Jamie Corab, Bull Manuel, who's in the production uh, chair there today. Trevor Bartlett, Emily Neary, and uh, John Barron, who's also been part of our producing team. Thank you so much for watching. Congratulations, Team Nathan Young, winners of the 2023 Newfoundland Tag Third, and Team Stacy Curtis, who's won the 2023 Scotties. Goodbye.